Hello, friends! Welcome to High Rollers, the Dungeons & Dragons stream here on the Yogscast Twitch uh, channel. Thank you very much for joining us. We are not at the Yogscast, however, and no. I will get to that very, very soon. It's amazing. Uh, but let me first introduce our players. I am, of course, Mark Sherlock Humes, your Dungeon Master for today, and I am joined by Trot. Hello, it's me. Kim. Hello. Hey. Katie. Hi. And our very special guest, who is actually responsible for us being able to stream today, so she deserves yeah. extra thanks from you. Uh, we have Alyssa, who is the project coordinator for the C-Team here at Penny Arcade. Yay. And that is in fact where we are. We are at the Penny Arcade Studios. Uh, big thank you to Alyssa, Josh and Jerry, who have kind of set this all up for us, um, who have let us come in and stream. On the, a Sunday as On well. a Sunday, yeah. like Sunday. poor Josh, we had to bring him in on his weekend, and Alyssa very kindly offered to come and play with us as well. Um, Red. Yeah, and uh, they very, very graciously lent us the use of the studio to stream today. It's amazing. Isn't it amazing? Like, we've got this amazing it's setup. Never be this I watch again. this stream as well, so I'm kind of a bit freaked out because I watch the stream every week. Yeah. So, um, speaking of the stream, if you'd like to kind of repay the kindness that they've shown us by letting us stream here, please go and check out Penny Arcade streams. Uh, they stream pretty much every day on twitch.tv forward slash Penny Arcade, um, doing a wide variety of games. But specifically, if you want to see some amazing D&D shows, uh, watch The C Team, which is on twitch.tv forward slash hyper RPG. There's a little box which will give you some information about it as well. Yeah. That's at 3.30 PST on Thursdays, right, Alyssa? It is. Um, and it's, it it's, is. it's DM'd by Jerry Hawkins or Tycho from Penny Arcade. It's got a great cast of characters uh, with just really, really funny, really, really enjoyable. Please do check it out and kind of, you know, return the favor that they've given us by letting us stream here and go and check those guys Thanks, out. Thanks, in chat for spamming their link. Thank you, Aquaise, <laughs> for spamming yeah. it in chat as well. Perfect. Um, other Mark. things, just before we go on, go on. We're in the same t-shirt. We are wearing the same t-shirt. We're all wearing D&D &D swag. swag. Yep. Which, nice which we all got. You've got Beware we'll the, the Dungeon. The, Dem the Demi nice. Gorgon. Um, That's an amazing shirt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, and these are all came from, which I was, my next point, this is an amazing segue, That's why was I to say, that. Thank you to Wizards of the Coast because we had an amazing time at the Stream of Annihilation event, yeah. which has run over Friday and Saturday. Alyssa was there in the background yeah. watching it all and lurking, kind of lurking and just yeah. scoping it so out. Um, and we had a fantastic time. It was a really incredible experience. Thank you so much to the Wizards team for bringing us down, giving us all this amazing swag. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the prologue for Uncharted Territory, our new show, which is going to be starting on the 30th of June on a Friday, 8 p.m. BST. Definitely one worth checking out. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes peeled on that. But yeah, seriously check it out. The, the new module's coming out pretty soon and there's loads of cool products around that. We had an amazing time, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going through yeah. my notes. Also, big thank you to everybody who came to see us at MCM Comic Con. Was it last weekend? Yeah. Oh my God. Um, who We've came out busy. to see us? Right. Yeah, like came and saw us yeah. there. We really had a great time at the live show. Thank you everybody who came to the signing. That was amazing. Um, so, shall I do a quick recap and then bring you in, especially for you, Alyssa, so you have a vague idea of our crazy adventures? That sounds great. Okay, so, uh, the party was sent to a, a dwarven settlement called Velderman. A little hill town, basically, out in the middle of nowhere, with rich lands and uh, rich mines and all that kind of thing. They were sent there because there were some reports that it was under attack, but the, the details weren't particularly clear. As they arrived, the party investigated it and discovered that this town had actually been completely taken over by a, a group called the Broken Sky, a villainous group that the party had encountered before in the past, um, who were strip mining the land for food, resources, workers, or anything they could get their hands on. You guys had a little bit of a, a to and fro with the Broken Sky. You had to retreat a bit and then you came back. You snuck your way into the mines. You freed a number of the dwarves. You dealt a blow, killing one of their uh, with their, mad, their mage that was kind of like looking after things. Yeah. And then you discovered that one of the, uh, the two leaders, two fire giants who were leading this kind of attack, one of them had gone into a dwarven ruin, uh, an old uh, insane asylum for dwarven sorcerers, and had uh, gone in there to recover a go uh, manual of golem creation. You guys made your way inside. You encountered a couple of NPCs along the way, some allies, including a tiefling treasure hunter named Saito, who was uh, basically taken along to kind of help them get past all these tricks and traps, but intended to betray them and break into a vault uh, where he took you guys. And you guys made your way past. You solved the Sphinx's riddle. You got some cool magic items. You made your way out. 
and then you decided to go after this fire giant. You went through a couple of tricks, uh, trapped rooms, a corridor which seemed to prevent people from being able to move down it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also dealt with a clay golem uh, which had come in uh, in this sort of, sort of kiln room and that Trot had uh, Cam had accidentally Some, activated. Someone did. Somebody yeah. activated. It wasn't it. me. Uh, well, you guys dealt with the clay golem and then you proceeded to find Tanya, this fire giant woman uh, who had captured uh, a dwarf wizard mm -hmm. and had recovered this manual of golem creation. Sadly, the dwarf wizard Ithane, who you were trying to recover, was killed, uh, but you fought the fire giant, uh, including a very well-timed polymorph spell by Cam Buckland, turning her into a mole, and then throwing her into the trapped corridor that you guys had managed to get past. Very creative. Um, very, very <laughs> creative, great. very, very clever. Uh, and yeah, you managed to slay this fire giant woman, you recovered the manual, and everything else. As you left the building, as you left this kind of ruin, you made your way back up to the surface. You regrouped with T uh, Juto and Saito, who had been teleported away because Kim wasn't there. Um, <laughs> I was sick. You were sick. Uh, so you guys made your way up to the surface just in time to see an enormous airship the size of a village, basically, uh, being loaded with supplies, dwarven slaves and workers being brought on board by the other fire giant, a male called Gregor. Um, the ship takes off, goes up into the clouds, followed by a roke, a massive giant eagle, which flies up into the clouds with it, headed for the ruined city of First Light. Um, and it descends, it soars up into the sky and makes its way there. And you guys were pretty much left on the precipice looking down at Veldaban, which you can now see is pretty much in ruins. Most of the buildings have been torched or, or destroyed. Um, there seems to be very little sign of life at this point. Um, to speed things up a little bit, because obviously there's a lot of things going on, you guys made your way down, there is pretty much no sign of life. A few of the dwarves you rescued from the mines had made their way down there to discover most of their family had been taken, uh, the buildings destroyed, including the dwarf bartender Ela, who you had intended to try and find her husband for, sadly he was the one that was killed, um, and yeah, they seem to basically be missing. Uh, Reynard, in particular Reynard Farahorn, a character that you were travelling with, is particularly distraught, seems that he really wanted to save the people there, um, and decides to head back to Talisval without you. Uh, Cassandra, the paladin in a Bahamut, uh, who had kind of been looking after Reynard, decides to go with him to make sure he's safe, okay. uh, but leaving you three with the Tiefling Saito uh, basically in this town. What would you guys like to do to start things off? Guys, I've never been to this town before, and I assume we've kind of left it in a worse state than when we came here. We definitely have. <laughs> That's yes. pretty bad. Uh, we need to fix this. Uh, the airship, any ideas? It's huge, so I assume it's a giant one. Well, from looking at the map that Korak gave us, it was heading towards First Light. Mm -hmm. And First Light is the place I know about. <laughs> it's actually a place you do know huge. about, because it's pretty it's, uh, famous. It's, um, it was basically, once it was the, the capital of this, before the Lightfall, it was the biggest city. It was a metropolis, uh, run by mages. It was run by the, the, Ma the Arcane Brotherhood. Um, and it was a, a city of wonders, magical lights, uh, constructions, carriages that moved on their own, things like that. It was really magically, technically advanced. However, it was also the thing which was struck the worst when Palos Light, the comet, the celestial comet, was destroyed and rained these huge crystals down. The city was devastated, killing everybody inside. Mm. Now it is known as a kind of place where monsters lurk, but it's also a dead magic zone. Magic does not work there. I'm kind of concerned about going to First Light. <coughs> Being who I am, a Lightborn, uh, there's all those big shards there. I have no idea what it's going to do to me. Well, also, we are greatly underpowered. Yeah. We purposefully avoided that area when we travelled here. Saito's like, yeah, you don't want to go there. That's a, that's a bad idea, let me tell you. Uh, best thing is, uh, you guys, we should head back to Talisval, kick it up, get some beers, and beat feet. Wait till it all blows over. Yeah, absolutely. No, we can't do that. Saito. Why? We... We help with this town. We have to report back, and we have to, we have to do something. Report about. back at Talisval. Yeah, we have to go. To oh, that. that's fine. You guys can do what you want. I'm going to kick it up and, and enjoy a drink. You come to Talisval with us? Well, I'm not going on my own. No, I'm not like any points at Reynard and Cassandra. He's like, those two are idiots. These rooms are dangerous. You saw that ship? You could come out of nowhere. By the way, uh, why did you disappear? Do you know what happened? It's a funny story, right? Like, I know a little bit about magic. Chuto doesn't, so I, I, I just explained it in layman terms. Uh, I reckon it was some sort of sensor in the asylum to prevent demon summoning. Crazy wizards, easily done, triggered by the infernal tiefling blood, 
teleported us up to the surface, got us out of there, basically. Racist Thank magic. You. Oh, fair enough. I mean, essentially, <laughs> you're not wrong. I mean, yeah, basically racist magic. Teeslings only. Mm. And uh, why a mole? That's the only thing I could find nearby to send a message. I thought you guys should There's know the mole. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It was cute. Yeah. Well, I used that. Cheeto thought it was cute. That's interesting. That mm. doesn't usually happen. Maybe she's been replaced by some sort of doppelganger. Yeah. Are you okay, Juto? Are you real? Duster. Okay, yeah. yeah she's, she's, fine. Fine. Okay. she's fine. It's Juto. All right, All right. let's head back to town as well. Do we have any sort of transportation? Is there anything in the town that we could use? Uh, we could head back there and see what's left. And Broken we Sky did have a few horses. We might be able to scrounge yeah. them if they left them behind. Let's uh, sneak in. They All were right. using it as food for the, the bird. Just in case there are okay. still Broken Sky. So you guys want to give me stealth checks if you're going to sneak yeah. in? Yeah. Stealth the room. Nice. Natural one. Sweet. Uh, Perfect. 16. Okay. 15. I'll say, you don't need to worry. There is actually no broken troops left, uh, broken sky troops left. I'm just like, <laughs> the, only, <laughs> the only sign of life you find is literally like the bedraggled dwarven prisoners who actually don't pay you much attention because they're kind of a bit overcome by their grief. Uh, they're digging through their buildings, trying to find what property they can, try and find oh, signs right. of life and things like that. The few that do look over to you either look incredibly downtrodden or they kind of look angry, uh, <laughs> as in maybe thinking that some of this is on your shoulders. Um, but they don't aggressively come after you, I think. They're too busy dealing with the situation they're currently okay. in. I'm going to keep my head down then. And, uh... Uh, you guys, what you do find, though, is that there were a few stables and uh, there's definitely... Four, there's, a, there's more than four, there's like five or six horses mm -hmm. um, which you could easily take and they're saddled got bags, everything else ready to go. It looks like the Broken Sky left them behind. Taking horses on a massive airship, probably not the smartest idea, so they decided to leave them here. Just gonna awkwardly, like, glance at the people all staring at us, kind of angrily, and just be like, okay, we're getting, it's gonna take their stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna go to, like, the nearest dwarf mm -hmm. who's watching us, mm -hmm. and um, give them two rubies to say, um, we need these horses. I'm so sorry that we failed you. He kind of just looks... He has a kind of... Uh, it's an older dwarf, not one you recognize. Grain beard. Uh, still looks quite weak from the work in the mines. And he just kind of nods his head. And he's just... He doesn't look angry. But there is a very sorrowful look in his eye. And he's just like... Take them. Leave. I hope that the masters back at Talos Val can get revenge for those we've lost. We are going to report back to Talisval, to Korak himself, and we will get him to send aid. Thank you. Talisval will send you aid. I hope that it comes quickly. The last time, well, let's just see. If they had come sooner, perhaps this would not have happened. But thank you. And he just kind of leads his people away. Um, the rubies they take, they're not going to say no. <laughs> I need to take them, but okay. there's not like a word of thanks or anything like that. You guys grab the horses, um, and Juto and Allura actually know the way back because they traveled by horse here originally. And you guys make your way. A um, couple of things. Uh, you head down following along a river leading to the Shard Lake, which is a big lake that looks out, uh, is next to Talisfal and those areas. Is that um, the lake that the crocodile was in? It, it, part, it was in a river, <laughs> okay. but yes, it was the giant crocodile where Reynard made a fool of himself. Yeah. Um, first things first, those of you who had the magic items which had the role-playing effects, so mm -hmm. your hatred of dragons, your distrust of man, and your kind of like reflecting too much on things, those actually fade because you spend one at least one night out in the woods. The other thing that happens is you undergo a bit of a, a physical transformation because of the belt. Oh, um, right. <laughs> so, you grow uh, an additional foot and five inches. So what? add that to your height. Uh, your figure definitely becomes more, not necessarily muscular, oh but God. definitely kind of like uh, more She's curvaceous and more now. sort of like feminine. Your hair grows probably an extra like four or five inches as well. Um, so and like five foot instead of four foot now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What, like five foot something or? Yeah, like almost, like very Probably tall. Yeah, right nice. Down. So, it, the, I don't the, like the it. clothing <laughs> rips a little bit, but the belt kind of stays the same shape. It grows with it as well. But yeah, mm -hmm. you uh, the I, the frost giant belt of strength definitely physically affects you. Um, Does the other RP affect effects go. Change if I take the belt off. Do I, do I go back? If you unattune, yes. But it would happen slowly. You would understand that it. it would happen okay. like over a period of time, but not instantaneous. 
So those are the one thing that happens. And you guys have like two days where you're traveling, effectively. Uh, you travel a couple of days, you rest, things are quiet. Uh, Saito is annoying, but generally isn't too bad. So, you know, he stays quiet if there's any moments of contemplation. However, on the third day, as you guys are traveling back, you need to stop off. It's early in the morning, uh, the horses are getting tired, they need feed, you didn't have that many supplies. I need a slash. You're running on food, huh? I need a slash. You need guys. to take a piss. To... Um, and you actually come across a small village, but it looks incredibly busy. Uh, it is a bustling town. There's only maybe like eight or nine buildings, but there are actually tents that are being pitched around. Um, it's full of people as well. There's maybe like two, three hundred people here. They're all bustling around this village, and there's an excited and joyous kind of uh, mode for it. There's a couple of things that stand out. Uh, one being like, uh, the, all these people are grouped around, but as you're looking around, you swear that some of them are kind of, they've got like a green bandana on, or like they've got like colored blue hair. You know, or they've got like, almost like versions of your outfits, but ba badly made. And they're kind of like laughing and joking and drinking beers and things like that. All um, of us. All of our outfits. The, yeah, you three. And also, you're pretty sure there's a guy that's kind of got like Trelamar's coat. Like he's made a coat like Trelamar's and he's walking around. What the hell? Um, <laughs> what? Uh, you have come to the town of Merlo. Your contacts in Talisval. Uh, basically reported that Cam Buckland has been spotted kind of traveling these villages. Uh, he seems to move with strange company, but he's kind of going from village to village. Um, and his latest stop is this village of Merlo. Uh, and you've kind of tracked him down uh, through your various means, your kind of network of traders and stuff like that. And uh, at, you've arrived at this pretty much the same time these guys, maybe like a, a few, like 15 minutes before. And you've okay. seen the same site, this very strange, very bustling, small, out of the way village. Um, everybody's drinking and having a good time um, and you can see and the thing you know is that they've all been talking something about like they're excited for the show and they just keep saying like oh can't wait oh really looking forward to the show oh, it's gonna be great oh yeah and like you know all these wares are being sold like everything you know all the f apple farmers have brought out and they're like hawking apples for like double the price they normally should be it's kind of becoming a bit of a tourist you know thing that they're bringing everybody in um, You've got a vague description of Cam Buckland. You know he is, uh, he, he wears a bandana, a green bandana. He wears sort of like leather traveler's armor. He has a, a cape. Um, uh, and he, he's a very boisterous character. He's very much in the face. You know, he's, he's very loud, a little bit obnoxious. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like the description you've been given of him, basically. And okay. you can see that there's definitely people around who seem to be wearing these great green bandanas. Um, and yeah, you're just not quite sure of it. What, do you, what does your character look like? Give us a description of, of Viathan. Yeah, so um, Viathan is... Um, so she's, she's a human, mm -hmm. and um, she, she's a little darker in complexion. She has um, long, long black hair, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's tied back, but she wears um, darker clothing. Um, I would say a dark red kind of cloak that hangs around her. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, typically... I think she doesn't necessarily stand out as much just okay. because of the darker clothing. Okay, so she's just, so the darker clothing is to help her blend in and yeah. things like that. Okay, why don't so uh, why don't you three just give me a perception check and see if anybody gets a really high thing because you know most of these guys are country bumpkins and things like that, um, but you guys might be able to spot a couple of characters. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. So I'd say that probably. Uh, you two notice that there's definitely a few characters moving around. Um, there's uh, a tall, lanky-looking human with a thin moustache, uh, <coughs> and he's going around, and he's like, Oh, what, what do you think of the show? Are you looking forward to it? And they're like, Oh, yeah, mate, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, yeah. And he's like, Oh, good, yes, I've heard it's very good. <laughs> and he, he then moves off to the next group and asks the same question, um, and he seems to be kind of getting a feel for what's going on. Uh, you also notice there is a gnome, who is just drinking so heavily. She's like lounging around and she's got like three empty tankards and she's just being berated. She's like, ah, fuck you, you stupid idiots. Ah, and she's just like being really abusive to anybody that walks past. Um, and I'd say Laura, when you're 24, there's definitely like, the main thing that dark, like her clothing and stuff doesn't stand out, but she's slightly darker skinned um, and she's not as boisterous as everybody. Like everybody's kind of being a bit leery and she's kind of leaning around, like checking, scoping the scene out and things like that. Um, and yeah, you guys are, have arrived in this town. So what do you guys want to do? What do you, what, what, how do you want to go about this? Uh, noticing everyone's dressing up like us. Yeah, you're getting that impression. Like this is a fan convention. I mean, you're not this really is, sure what's going what on. That's what it is. That's what I think. Okay. And I'm just going to step off as if 
I've arrived. Okay, so you get off the horse. Uh, uh, inflate my chest. Okay. And just strut through the middle of the biggest crowd of bandanas. Yeah, I, I mean, see. like, as, as soon as you see that, there's a um, huge, like, way, woo, and they're, like, pointing at you. And a guy. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, everybody. A, a farmer looking chap who's kind of, like, holding, like, two, like, glass bottles. Like, they look quite dirty and rusty, but he's swigging out of them. He comes up and he's like, oh, you mate! You brilliant cam costume. That's amazing. Costume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got a me. few things wrong, it's dude. It's me. No, I'm the real one. I like it. He's totally in character. Look. He like jibs his mate. He's like, oh, Jim, look at this guy. Look at him. He's, he thinks he's cam. I'm <laughs> sorry. His name's Jib. Jib. Yeah. Jib. Yeah, it's my mate Jeb. Jeb. What's your name? Cam Buckland. No, come on. What's your real name? Cam Buckland. Oh, this guy's a proper root. Ru- anyway, he's weird. Uh, all right, mate. Yep. Good job. And he like gives you a thumbs up and uh, takes his mate off. How do I prove myself? <laughs> mm. Yeah. So there's all this kind of moving around. What about you two guys? Like you're kind of seeing this with the horses. Um, you guys are on the outskirts of the village. You can see that there is at least one big kind of tavern building. And then there's a few stores. There's a few lodging houses. Um, but it seems to be that there's a lot of outlying farms. There's tents pitched all around the place as well. Like some of them look quite cheap. Um, but there's a couple that look quite fancy. One is absolutely gaudy it's like green and gold um it's like covered in swirling patterns and it actually has a couple of people standing around it as guards like with leather jerkins and like big heavy clubs and they're kind of got their arms folded keeping an eye out um and then some smaller ones that look quite well made does the the tent look like sort of cams green and gold yes it does interesting (laughs) i guess that's where i'm staying jib he like, he's like, no, that's where real cam is. Thank you. They're not no, going to come walk. out. I'm going right. to let walk him off? finish, just walk in that way. Vyathan, what are you thinking at this point? Um, yeah, so I want to I wanna know what this show's about. Okay, what, what so you're going to go up to somebody, about. like some random commoner yeah. or something like that. <laughs> um, he's like, oh, hello, love you. Yeah. Oh, have you not heard? There's this fella, right? He's called Cam Buckland, and he's got this group of mates. And they go around and they tell this funny show about their adventures. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like some performer or something like that. And he's going to be here today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight, yeah, yeah. Really? So what they do is they wait until sundown and then they do like a big show. Uh, There's a stage and everything. They've built like a set. It's amazing. It's brilliant. Hmm, interesting. So how how do you know exactly who Cam is if everyone here is dressed up as Cam? No, you you all knew when you see him, right? He's got like (laughs) his little beard and like he stands out. Um, he's just really funny as well. Like, yeah, you'll know him. Like, he's actually staying, and they point at this gaudy green and gold tent. Oh yeah. He's like, yeah, he's staying in there, and he'll come out and he'll come up on stage. Oh, trust me, you'll know him when you see him. He's so funny, uh, and they're just kind of <laughs> like rolling their eyes around and stuff like that. Um, and he's just like, yeah, no, I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. It, all the villages around Telus Valley, he's been doing a tour. Really? Yeah. Uh, really? So, um, so this isn't his first time through this area? No, no, he's, he's been doing loads of villages. Just how we, look at and he points all the people. He's like, they've been coming around for miles. They've, they want to see it. Wow, okay. All right, so the, it'll be starting tonight and, and he'll be over in that Sundown tent. down over at the stage and it, yeah, well, you're not allowed to go near him. He's very particular about right. that. He's got to prepare. That's okay. what they say. You know, he's got a few guards and that. They say, oh no, Mr. Buckland's got to get ready for the show. And right. They don't let you go near it. You it's know. completely understandable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a big star like that. You don't want to be messing with his performance. So. Very true. Well, yeah. I appreciate your help. No, it's my pleasure. It'll be, if you need a room, the inn's a bit busy, but a few of the houses, you can rent rooms there. I'm doing it pretty cheap, two gold a night if I've got a spare room up in my place if oh, you need great. one. Oh, yeah. And what, what direction is that? He points over, he's like, oh, I stay in, and he points at like a very kind of rustic looking cottage house, kind of, you know, stone foundations and then like wooden thatched roof and that. Like, that's my old family home. Me and my missus live in there, but we got a lovely spare room. Oh, right. It's yours for the night if you'd like it. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, I'd like to, to rent a room right now if I can. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Um, so it's two gold a night. I throw in, my wife, my wife does a lovely hot pot, <laughs> lovely, bit of, lovely bit of dinner. <laughs> That's my weakness right there. Ah, oh, well, pleasure. You are a lovely young lady. It's so nice to meet somebody like that. You get a load of people traveling through here and they're all snobby thinking they're going to the city going to make a load of money. It's nice to meet somebody who mm. don't know worth. Well, the pleasure is on mine. Oh, he and extends so- a hand and it's like a big rough farmer's hand. Yeah. Like it's quite huge and hairy and he just kind of like shakes it quite vigorously. Um, Okay, so I'm going to pull out some gold. I'm just going to flick it at him. Okay, he's like, oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I plan on staying here for maybe a couple nights, okay. um, but I'm sure. sure I'll see you around. We can sort that out. You, you seem a trusting, a trusting lass. It's no problem. Sounds no great. Problem. Um, um, I want to head over to the, the, to tent. the tent. Okay, so what about you, Juto? What do you want to do? I don't like this. I'm, just, I'm looking at <laughs> all this. I'm Everybody's at like pointing at you, and they're like, yeah, and they can see them whispering, and like they're like, 
I'm looking at all these Cam Buckland wannabes, and like, I don't like being center of attention. I don't like that people are looking at me. Yeah, like they're they're, they're like, staring and they're like whispering. You can see some kids like, but you can't hear what they're saying. Yeah, and they're pointing uh, mainly at your tail. I'm really uneasy about all this. Are there any like Juto cosplayers or anything? Uh, you can see that there's there's like uh, what you see is like you can see like a, a couple of girls who've got like red. It's kind of like yours, and they've just like smeared their faces with like grape stains. Um, and they've got like twigs for horns and things like that. <laughs> I'm literally just raising. <laughs> but my they're like. About this. But when you're watching them, you kind of get an a, a, a interesting insight. They're being really aggressive. Like they're just going around like kicking stuff over and being like, "I will destroy you!" <laughs> like smacking like sticks around. <laughs> so accurate. I want to like put a hood up and just like. <laughs> yeah. So like the two of you are kind of shying away from yeah. this attention, whereas you're just like, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. I am yeah. strutting towards the tent. Okay, I, the I don't want to follow Cam though. I want to. Okay, you try. gonna follow as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the you guys head over there and you kind of bump in. You see this figure like you saw her briefly before. Yeah. She seems to be heading in the same direction as you. Um, as you kind of get closer, you're not. Sh there's a lot of these costumed kind of guys, but they all look like peasants in like you know roughly honed tunics and things like that. One of the guys does seem to match your description, and it looks just a bit too good. I mean, you're a pretty smart person. You know the streets and things like that. Either this guy's an imposter or could be the real thing. But from what you've been told, he wouldn't just be wandering around the streets. So it's something to like keep in mind that like this is an interesting sort of development that you weren't expecting. Um, as you guys arrive at the tent, there's actually a ring of big looks like they probably were like heavy like farm workers or something like that big bulging muscles short cut hair chewing on hay and they're like all right sorry I'm mate i know you're a fan but you're not allowed in i'm not a fan i'm 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 the og oh really it's me okay cam buckland what's the password uh don't give a fuckland nope <laughs> nice try. we get a lot of your type around here trying to pretend they're the real one trying to sneak in get an autograph do you want to see my dagger look yeah, it's a nice prop. I throw it. Yeah. Very nice. Nice little magic <laughs> trick you got there. Thanks. Can I ask him, uh, where, where are the other... Very nice. Thank you. Where are the other performers? <laughs> They're in their tents. Where are their tents? Can I'm we... not going to tell you. You're going to try and sneak in there as well. I know your type. Wants... I'm not stupid. Nice try. What's happening here? What are you talking about? It's the show. What show? Cam Buckland and Company show. <laughs> what? And Company? Yeah. Cam, is this something to do with your family? Look, either I've blacked out in the mines and I've done some crazy tour in the past few days that time has elapsed. I mean, we were on the horses for a long time. Something could have happened. Have I been losing my memory? Are we okay? I don't know. Well, we're, we're all seeing it. I'm just wondering if it's something to do with your family. Is it the Bucklands? Look, I don't know who you are, why you're having this weird conversation in front of me, because I'm just a guard. Go to the inn, have a drink, show's at sundown, you can watch it then, you see it for yourself. I'm afraid as good as your costume, sorry, you're not allowed in. He just folds his arms. I'm gonna put my arm on his shoulder and mm -hmm. say, look here, fella, whoever this Cam Buckland is, you need to remember something about you. You're not just a guard. You're so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Where's the real Cam Buckland? You see, now, as you've put your arm and you've leaned in, three more big, heavy dudes kind of come round. And, uh, Do you guys lift hay? He like puts an arm around you and you can feel this kind of tight muscle squeeze. And That's he leans tight. in and he's like, You can ease up a little bit. Real Cam's having his lunch right now, mate. You go have lunch over in there in that tavern. Very nice art part in there. And then you come watch that show later. Yeah. All right? Yeah. I'm, I'm and he interested. squeezes again. Yep. Yeah, I'll do that. That's fine. Good lad. Good lad. I kind of awkwardly slink yeah. out of his arm. Yeah. And then you I'm kind gonna of like, slip down. I'm watching this and I'm thinking I should probably help him. And then I'm kind of thinking I'm sort of enjoying this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. What I time of day is it now? Uh, quite early morning. Like maybe 11 a.m. or something like that. All right. So it's okay. <laughs> So you got like sundowns probably around uh, six seven p.m. So you got a few hours, yeah. You see all this happen. Like you're watching this group of quite clearly adventurers, and they seem to match. Like especially the guy who's dressed as Cam. Like you kind of look at your orders a little bit, and it's 
it's a near perfect match, but you're not quite sure what's going on. So. Okay. Wouldn't the fact that there's an actual tiefling there <laughs> give it away? The, it, the these people like they it does seem to be like they don't really know what's going on. Like they they, they just seem to think that you're in costume. They might think for whatever it's an illusion reason. as well. If everyone's in costume. Mm. So I'd like to go grab some ales. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm gonna grab five. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to. It's like a seller who's there, and he's just like he's like, "You're right, love." All right, you want some beers? And he's like, shows them That's up. That's exactly what I need. All right, okay. And he's like, he looks at you, gives you an eye up and down. He's like, you probably want my clearing, clean cups, right? Well, you know me. Okay. It's exactly what I like. That's it. All right. I, he gives you a wink, or, uh, like a kind of like toothy <laughs> grin. Um, and he goes over to a little stand that he's got, and he actually goes into a cupboard underneath it, and he pulls out five semi-clean glasses and he pours like a thick frothy kind of beer and he kind of shoves them towards you he's like that's five no ah, what did the wife say <laughs> ten copper okay i'm gonna reach and just grab a bunch and just it's slap like, it down the ground like, oh, okay he's like thank you very much my man thank you very much and i'm gonna You're just take them on i'm gonna walk over to you guys i'm gonna say cam it's so nice to see you and i'm gonna hand each of you guys finally ale. some recognition and i take the beer and just um, I'm going to go up to the guard and say, these guys are very close to me, um, and this this is Cam here. I'm, I'm really surprised you don't recognize him, and I'd like to cast Charm on him. Oh, okay. Oh. You're going to cast Charm person. Yeah. So, first level spell, right? Yes. Okay. Going to note that. Nice. Uh, so, what's your spell save DC? Um, uh, it is 14. Okay. <laughs> so, his eyes seem to glaze over for a moment, and he's just like... Hello, me! And he like wraps an arm around you and he kind of like tussles your hair a little bit. He's like, oh, like, he's pretty good, but he's not the real Cam. The real Cam's told me a password so I don't let any of these, these imposters in. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. you see, Cam's a really good friend of mine, but if, if he hasn't received that message, um, you know, I think I should kind of pass it along to him. Does he know what the password is? The real Cam? Yeah. yeah that's, how, that's how I knew it's him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So if I were to meet up with him um, later, yeah. and let's just say he was in a state where he couldn't remember it whatsoever, that's what should I point. tell him? That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, and he's like, I tell you what, send those lot off, because they, they're, they're pretending they're imposters. And yeah. I'll whisper it to you. All right. Okay. He's like, yeah, yeah, get them gone. All right, guys, it was really good to see you. I'll probably see you around. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll meet up again soon. I know exactly what's happening. Thanks for the... <laughs> thank you. And you just watch as this strange woman just comes up and what is like she giving you drinks. I got Very confused. Check. Yeah, of course, yeah. You can throw me an insight check. I wish uh, she did. Oh, wow. That was good. You get the impression that she's cottoned on, that you guys are probably the real deal. And she's trying... Like, this guard is... Like, you watched his eyes glaze over. You remember, like, like you know, Cam cast yeah. charm. You're pretty sure he's been affected by a charm person spell, like the way she moved her hands and stuff, like very Obi Wan Kenobi style. Um, and he's definitely kind of, yeah, she's she's getting some information out of him that only she can get because he's she's the only one he trusts. I mean, Alora, if you're not drinking that, I sure. can drink it. Thank you, <laughs> Juto. So, you're welcome. You, you're and you guys like step that, right? away for a moment. I kind of pass yeah. it, but just as you go for it, I just drop it. <laughs> Why? So Clumsy. He's like, this is weird. Clumsy. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna go to the tavern and have a drink. And he just pots off. He's like, this is too weird for me. And he just See, heads off. Seeing that she's getting results from this guy, mm -hmm. I'm gonna back away with the rest of them so that she can get Okay. The so this guy away. leans in. Um, his name's Bob. And he's just oh. like he's like he's like, alright, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the password I don't know why he says that it's so funny. It's Cam's dick is really small. And that's the password. That uh, well, that's appropriate. It's very yeah, appropriate. Exactly. Um, so in if, fact, he, if he gets too drunk, because I know sometimes he likes, he likes his. Was beers. he offended by this password? No, no, no. It's like that's part of the show, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. I, I think Cam's a pretty solid person. I think. You yeah, know? he's a funny guy. Yeah, he's is really he a good friend funny. of yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, he employed us all. He paid us loads of money to come and work as guards for his tour. He, mm. You know, little tiny town. I was barely making any money. Gave me a good old sack of gold to do this. Nice. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, well, it sounds like he has a good sense of humor, too. Oh, yeah, he's well, so, like, you won't, like, trust me, watch the show later, it's so good. I'll get you a free ticket. Oh, will you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, it's all right, no problem. Man, I feel like we're going to be good friends after this. After yeah, this we're event. best friends. We're best friends? Okay. BFFs. So, so Bob, for life. Could, could, could you remind me of the, of the password? It's Cam's dick is really small. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. For God's sake. 
Okay. And he's just oh, like, all right, like see, see you yeah, later. Yeah, I'll see you soon. We'll grab some beers after show. Sounds great. And I'm going to hand I'm gonna hand you my ale. Oh, thanks, mate. And he like downs it in one. He's like, oh, it's a clean glass, too. <laughs> uh, and he just kind of like nods. And like the others are like, eh, and they give you a thumbs up as well. Because like, it seems like, like they kind of look to Bob for advice. And, okay. Like, they kind of give you a thumbs up. Um, cool. He's like, all right, see you later. Sounds, sounds great. As I'm drinking everybody else's drink, I think I know what's going on here. It's quite clear. Oh, do enlighten us. I'm extremely popular. I'm a huge hit. And someone has taken it upon themselves to completely destroy my image, imitate me, and use me to gain money. And this concerns us why? It's my street cred. They can't be me, that's not fair. What is street cred? Is it a human thing? It's, it's, yeah. It's a, it's very important to me and my reputation and my image that people like this, we need to maybe send them templates on how costumes should look because I can't have people walking around like this. This is... As he says that, there's like a guy who's got like a blue bandana and like just really badly sewn together like I feathers. Mean, like he's got like duck feathers to make like the raven cloak. And like they're all like, wait, hey, look, he's got a cloak. Who oh, even, like that's blue. How does he, this is unbelievable. We need to go to the show and destroy it. We, you can burn it, Alora can bear it, and we'll ruin this guy. It's, it can't happen. It's someone that knows about all of us though. What? Well, there's Juto costumes. Yeah, but there's... I'm the most important, Alora. <laughs> Look around you. That guy's you. wearing Trill's there's... coat. What? It's someone who knows I about all of us. I didn't notice that. It's quite rubbish anyway. Uh, but there's more bandanas you can see than everything else. There is more bandanas than anybody else. Like, there, there is more And there's a big tent. Easiest costume to put together. Yeah. <laughs> so, at this point, Variety <laughs> would think so. You're, they're just bickering over in a corner. Like, you can see these three just, like, bickering about something. <coughs> um, what do you want to do? Are you going to head back or do you want to go off and do something else? Um, I'm going to go over to them. I'm going to pull up a chair and kind of spin it around and sit on it. So, so I'm just sitting there watching it's you like guys. a rickety old farm chair that you kind of spin around. There's, like, a few tables with, like, tablecloths. And, you know, they've kind of... It's almost like everybody's kind of quickly hastened to set up, like, small businesses or, like, little places you can grab a bite to eat. Like, little stands with, like, you know, mouse on a stick or whatever and stuff like that like you know think yeah. anything that they can get their hands on to sell they're selling um uh, they've got like wooden cups with like cam written on it and they'll sell it for like a copper piece or something like that um, i immediately kind of just look and kind of not unsheath my guanda but kind of like you know just you know it's it's there so to give you a visual representation juto you're like what uh sort of like six foot nearly or like yeah you've got the artwork there so she's tiefling purple skin horns very elaborate dress but then this long staff with a curved blade okay. um on it the other character that you see is Alora, who is this she is now actually very like quite tall <laughs> like she was quite small um but like she's got this big thick leather belt and she seems to be very muscular and fit as well like she's kind of got this demure kind of like outfit and then this long beautiful hair but then she actually looks like she could probably bust open some heads um and then cam buckland looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's me uh, and that's what everybody's currently dressed as like that's what they've all got like these dodgy capes and things like that okay um so you kind of glare yeah you unsheath the guandao she's heard you it's fine She's just a huge fan, clearly. Like, how one. long have you been a Cam Buckland fan for? Oh, for, for, well, ever since I was a child, actually. A child. I was, I was number one fan. You must have seen Insight. when I was with the Buckland doing the talk. Cam, stop talking. You know who we are. <laughs> 18, yes, 18, so, 18, um, okay. just to get, that. just to get down to it, um, I'm here because apparently there's someone... You want someone... a signature? I'm going to start writing on the table. <laughs> <laughs> you like can probably take it. the table. I'm getting very tipsy at this point. Yeah. We gathered that. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Trump. Uh, so, so actually, how could you prove that you are Cam? Actually, Cam? Uh, again? Yes. Why does he need to? Because I have some information for you. Um, seems it... that there is someone who is looking for you. Oh. I mean, not to sound pretentious or anything, but... I mean, look around you. There's many people looking for me. Cam, shut up. Okay. <laughs> Who have, is looking for him? Have you heard of someone named Karen? Uh, Wait, do, have we heard of Karen? do I recognize it's, that name? Yeah. Yeah, you recognize it very much. It's the person, it was the, uh, the noble in Greybell 
that um, hide the Bucklands with Amelia and, and Mirilla, um, who wanted to marry Mirilla. Uh, oh. That's from your past. So you, you, you know that the name Keraton Blackhearth is a name you, I probably would have suspect you would never forget. <clears throat> it kind of like sparked your journey into becoming an adventurer and um, you know you had the, the, the image of Mirilla when she, the dead spirit when you were kind of removing Demetrius' mm. spirit who told you that it was actually Karen that killed her, not you. And we heard that as well. Yeah, we you did that. hear that, you yes, both heard okay. that. As soon as she says Karen, I'm just immediately like aggressive, like, and how do you know Karen? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that we're friends, um, but, and, and Karen is, is looking for him um, to... You, you, what you know is that he has sent out agents to capture him to alive, capture him. Okay. and the intent is definitely from your contacts, the intent is not friendly. Okay. It is, and you also know from your from your master that uh, Karen is tied to necromancy, okay. um, and and that is a reviled thing amongst the wizarding community. It's just like no, we that needs to stop basically. Okay. And so yeah, there's definitely connections there, and he is not a nice man from okay. reputation. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, there um I guess there are people who are looking for you right now. Karen seems to be a puppet master of of um of these agents who are looking for you to just capture you and, and take you back. Um, and are this, you one of them? Do you think I'm one of them? It's I'm very crazy. confused. You get the incense, like, she is very, uh, actually quite forward and casual. Judging by her appearance, she's not acted aggressively, or not even acted as in wanting to, like, subtly kind of take you over. There's not necessarily a, a true intent, but you get the impression that what she's telling you is legit. Like, there's no deception here. Like, she's actually conveying her mission, and you mm. don't get any kind of idea that she's hiding something. It would be very silly of her to just approach us with this information if she had any sort of connection with Karen. We've experienced stranger things. Yeah, and I look at her on the bandanas <laughs> in the cosplay. Like, you can actually, yeah, yeah. actually look out at the group. Uh, two of the cams, like with these kind of cheap bandanas and capes, are having an argument. And uh, it's just like, no, Ka Trelamar would easily be beat Cam in a fight. And it's like, no, he's, he, you know, Cam will take him. And like they're having like a big argument about who would win in a fight. Trell, Trell's got it. Trell's definitely yeah. got it. <laughs> no. No offense. <laughs> so, what else do you know? Uh, do I have to make myself scarce? Is Karen coming here? Um, Am I gonna die today? Karen. This this is the last day. This is it. I mean, and I'm gonna lean back and I'm gonna start picking at my my fingernails with with my dagger, <laughs> just kind of nonchalantly and say, yeah, I think I think you know they're gonna be here today. Probably uh, well, probably gonna end you today. I think. What? This is the end. We need to go. We need to go. We need to see the show. Go. We need to kill the guy. <laughs> the, the imposter being go. Immediately. What? Does this After show Sunday. have anything to do with Karen? Uh, in fact, I had I I really only just found out about the show myself. Um, I'm a little taken aback. You think that because you you your contacts had guided you to this village. Um, it's likely like whoever this is pretending to be Cam has actually picked up enough attention that that's kind of becoming known as you know that's the Cam to, like that's the real one. Um, give me a uh, just give me an intelligence check, just straight yeah. up intelligence. Um, I, that would be a 15. 15. Yep. Judging by your knowledge of the black market, your knowledge of your kind of criminal underworld, if you could find out that this village is, you know, where Cam currently is, the agents of Karen of Black Black Earth are probably going to come here too. Okay. Um, it's, they're probably going to track down the same figure. Whoever, if it is an imposter, if this is the real Cam, whoever's doing these performances is also probably in danger. They, okay. they might be a... a, a, a uh, mistaken target. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look over at you and say, I'm all, I'm just joking. Uh, I think you're gonna be completely safe. If you really look around, there are so many people here that look just like you. So I think you're gonna be fine. That's a good point. I mean, apart from the blue ones. It's like a buck tooth guy who's like, I'm Cam Bugland! Oh boy. <laughs> but it might help to uh, bring your guys' appearance a little bit, uh, to be a little bit more realistic with everyone else's appearances here. Why are you helping us? 
DM. <laughs> so I mean, it was your master, uh, Leonora, who mm -hmm. basically has tasked you with, you want to find out why this Karen Blackhurst might be after Cam. Yeah. Ideally subtly, so as not to tip your hand um, and to tip the fact that she wants to know about it. But also, generally, the wizards are there to serve the people. They've kind of had this agreement that they want to try and help out. Your master isn't necessarily, or like your your teacher isn't necessarily about like laws, but she is generally a good person, and she's tried to instill that and kind of you know convince you, it's okay to steal things that we need to mm -hmm. then do greater deeds, basically. Okay. And so she's asked you to kind of be like, look, go and find out what this guy wants, find out why they want this this Cam Buckland. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be a, a figure amongst the people, and try and prevent it, try and okay. you know stop them, basically. Um, so I say to you, um. My my mentor, a good friend of mine, has sent me. Um, apparently, apparently, Karen is into some dark, dark shit. Uh, let's yes. just say that I'm sure you guys know mm. of the necromancy. The um, yeah. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. obviously. Um, necromancy. And uh, well, my mentor is trying to fight against that, and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm I'm basically here to look out for you. Yeah, I'll just double Tutu's the suspicious character if you hadn't picked that up, by the way. She's quite paranoid. I'll probably do it with disadvantage. 15. 15? Uh, yeah, this is like a 2. Like, I'm convinced. 100%. Um, there's, I mean, she's keeping some things back. There's obviously, like, you know, this teacher, like, no names, obviously keeping that a secret. Again, probably, you know, being quite genuine. Just give me a, a deception check just to kind of, you know, see how well you're kind of keeping the secrets, kind of. How you're keeping your composure. Yeah. Um, that is... What is that? Uh, that's a 19. <laughs> 19. Oh, yep. Yeah, you're like... Yeah, she's pretty cool and calm, but you're like, okay, yeah, she seems on the down low. Like, you're mm. watching her behavior. You don't have to trust her by that, by any means. But you're watching the body language. There's no ticks. There's no signs that she's lying or anything like that. Okay. Um, as you guys are having this conversation, a couple of other things happen around the town. A large wagon pulls up. Uh, and two guys jump down, it's been pulled by a couple of horses, they're smiling, they kind of shake hands with some of the guys on the outskirts, they seem to be asking directions. Um, listening in, you can kind of hear like a snippet to their conversation like, oh yeah, we need to put our wagon somewhere, we've got some supplies, is that okay? Yeah, 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 you can store it here. Oh, is the show still happening? Yeah, 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 yeah. the show's still, yeah, we're looking forward to it, like, oh great, we can't wait to see Cam Buckland, like we really want to hear about him and that kind of thing. Um, and those guys then just kind of, get on their wagon, they pull it up behind a building, they get off, and then you can see them just mingling and like getting a bite to eat and having a beer and stuff like that and just uh, drinking around. The the female gnome that as you guys came in was just berating everybody, stumbles past, um, and she kind of gives you guys a bleary look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look at you with your costumes, young whippersnappers, that's funny. Ah, oh, look at you! Laura Gilanadel, princess! Nah, you're sweet. And then she kind of just stumbles away. She's very drunk. I do not like me. They, they know our full names. This is not just you, Cam. What's going on? Huh? Well, they're all huge fans. But why, why do we have fans? Because we're really popular and we're heroes. And we saved many people. We just left a dwarven village in ruins. Look, I trust you. Thank you for helping us. We should look more drab. So, <laughs> I'm gonna walk over to like, someone that's reasonably well dressed mm -hmm. as a Cam Buckland, mm -hmm. but clearly a costume mm -hmm. that's bad. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just gonna tap him on the shoulder. Yeah, it turns around, he's like, wanna meet? Nice. Oh, I wanna swap. You wanna swap? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What, everything? Yeah. I'm just gonna, right. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tap you on the shoulder and go, I think you should go in a different direction. What do you mean? I think you should dress up as Trelamar. No. Yes. No, it wouldn't <laughs> fit. No, that'd be horrible. Are, are we swapping? Why look I like I like your Cam outfit, it's amazing. Why look like Cam Buckland? Why not look like one of the others? I don't want to die. Cam, why don't you just take off some parts of what you're wearing? So that you're not a complete... I should point out, they're not all dressed up. Not all the villagers here are dressed up. Some of them are just like farmers or like, you know, you know, blacksmiths and things like that. There is general village folk, not like the YMCA village folk, but you get the idea. Like, there is people here. Why don't mm. you just take off your bandana? I might have 
bandana here. Even better. <laughs> oh, fine. I just pull off the bandana. You've got a bandana here, yeah, 100%. Oh, it's yeah. just like everywhere. Don't look at me. Like, it's like pressed in. You get like... that thing like where you've been wearing a hat like with your kind of hair it's and it's like just a pressed seam. in. It's like a <laughs> seam, yeah. Uh, and it just looks ridiculous. I just snort. <laughs> Stop it, both of you. Uh, uh, what else looks... Everything else looks really... <laughs> Just gonna look at the artwork. No, what you Quality got? content, thanks Where guys. Where is your artwork? I'm gonna take off the purple Coke. sash. Yeah, the cloak. Just take off like, like bits and pieces bundle and it stuff. all up. Yeah, pretty so I just have the brown okay. and beige stuff. Just brown. Yeah, you definitely kind of made yourself look a little bit less noticeable. Um, I feel so uncool right now. I'm gonna tie my hair back. Never cool. Okay, with and the extra length. I mean, the thing is, is Excuse me, you look a little bit different to Alora because obviously you're now way taller, you're more muscular, yeah. you've kind of got this longer hair. There's like your cost your clothes have physically like stretched and ripped a little bit from the growth anyway So you've kind of got like a, a default disguise. You do not look like like the other like, you know attempted Alora's um, <clears throat> You look like somebody who's a bit too big and, and buff like trying to cosplay like tiny little nice elf lady. I Think you're good. Juto, you really stand out Sorry, you wear vibrant red clothing and you're a tiefling <laughs> No one else here is a tiefling. You're gonna have to look drab. I don't know what I can do. Just go, look, there's a puddle over there. Oh, I Just have a clothing around reception. And... You've got, yeah, so, that, so those, what? um, it's... When did you have that? It's, a, it's the from clothes you got from Enera. We got from... Oh, we've yeah. all got them. So it's an outfit of your cut, it's like oh, more muted colours. Yeah. And when you're in a crowd, it helps you basically blend in. So yeah, you could change into those clothes and that would certainly help you. Um, I will do that. Okay, so you're gonna go like find somewhere to change? Like where are you gonna change? Like find a there room or something like that? Uh, there's outhouses, yeah. I will go to the outhouses. They stink! <laughs> they are rough. bad. Okay, I've yeah, you rough. can go in there and you can kind of get changed. You have to find places to store your stuff because you do not want it touching the floor. Uh, and you find stuff and yeah, you can get changed into this kind of like... It's almost like an exact replica of your outfit, but the colors are muted and drab. And then as you stand amongst people, it's like you're hard to see the details and things like that. It's like a minor enchantment. Yeah, kind of thing like that. Uh, Vithin, while they're kind of doing this, anything you'd like to do or...? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go try to um, purchase a, uh, a very drab cloak um, that looks like Cam's okay. from somewhere. Oh, easily done. Like, yeah. they're actually selling them. There's like people that have made like, you know, like... Uh, Tailors have made like really dodgy like bandanas and cloaks and things like that um, Like four silver pieces, which you've got you just kind of throw the money and yeah They just bundle it to you the gold threading is actually just painted on with like yellow dye It's not actually gold threaded and stuff like that and you kind of throw that on and yeah You can kind of blend in with the rest of them as well. Okay, so yeah, so like you guys have done all this um, At this point like the way you guys have been chatting and things like that you're kind of getting near to like 1 p.m Like lunchtime kind of thing um, Elora your passive perceptions 18, right? Yes. Does anybody else have a high passive perception check? <laughs> no? Nope. Okay. In Laura, you're kind of staying around and you guys have got change now. You probably get a bite to eat, kind of get some supplies. And you see somebody that you've not seen in a while. Um, a short figure in amongst the crowd. And you're certain they were watching you. And then as soon as you make eye contact, they seem to blend back in and try and fade away. Um, it's a small halfling fellow, short, rotund body. Um, actually, he gets advantage on those. Um, uh, small, rotund body, short, cropped hair, finery, but looks a little bit down on his luck. You remember him because the last time you saw him, he was in a meeting with Felania and Varesh and the Broken Sky, um, and he ran away. He, he ran managed away. to get away. Franco Sunsitter, an ex-member mm -hmm. of the council, a guy that actually tried to kill Korak, um, seems to be amongst this crowd. But as you look for him again, he's vanished into the crowd. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. You can give me a guys. perception check if you like. Yeah, I will. Nineteen. Uh, <clears throat> Nineteen. You can't find him. Like the small stature and this busy crowd full of people. You're like, you you run up to where he was, you kind of part people around, he's gone, he's vanished. He's Good. the one who poisoned Korak, right? He's the one, yeah. he's the, well, he attempted to poison him. Um, and then later on, he was having a meeting with uh, the officers of the Broken Sky outside the city, but yeah, he managed dragon, to escape. Yeah. Did he see uh, us? You, he saw us. If, actually, if you, are you gonna say that you saw Franco? Yeah. So, Vithin, this name rings a bell to you. 
working in the in the city councils and things like that and with your black market contacts franco sunsitter was once a member of the council of talis Val, uh kind of the the de facto leadership of the city he turned traitor and he joined this this terrorist organization called the broken sky and they have been looking for him there's currently a bounty of five thousand gold for his head uh if you can bring him dead or alive um because he has secrets that they want to know uh, and you've known that because this isn't really communicated on the open channels this is like sent out to assassins and spies and bounty hunters and things like that and you've picked up the name he's a short halfling fellow he's proven wily he's very adept at hiding and he's actually killed a few agents that have come after him as well in self-defense okay. um but yeah you've kind of heard the name as soon as Elora mentions it you, you, that rings a bell in your mind okay um so you just saw him yeah he was in the crowd but he's he's hiding very well i can't see him i can't find him again all right he's not dressed up like anything he's just... no he's wearing like almost like um like a merchant's outfit okay i think we need to get to a better position to try and maybe turn the tables on this and maybe get the jump on him instead yeah, are there any buildings that have like a second story? The tavern is the only one, and it's pretty ramshackle, it's not very tall, it's kind of a bit of a squat building, you imagine the second floor is kind of, those of you who are above six foot might have to kind of hunch a little bit um, to get in. No, no, nothing, it also bottlenecks all entrances to us, so maybe going inside there is a good idea. We can try it, we need to get high up, to, we need to see Scout. something. See if we can spot him in the crowd. So you want to climb up onto the roof, or you want to go inside and go up to the second floor and like look out window and stuff like that? I think go inside. Go inside. Mm. Okay. So you guys make your way there. Uh, the inn outside there is a sign uh, of this uh, this particular looking tavern. I'm just going to get my notes here because uh, it has a name. Uh, it is a picture of a duck inside a cider barrel, and it's called the Duck and Cider, um, and it's like this little quaint little country pub. Uh, little kind of like stone things. As you enter inside, it's bustling, it's full of people drinking. The strong smell of ale and stout kind of hit you. Uh, cooked roast uh, bread, freshly baked bread, kind of just wafts through the room. The old floorboards creak a little bit as you move over them. And you can see there is a large bellied man with a big handlebar moustache, bald head, um, who's just kind of like clapping his hand. He's like, yo, oh, you're right, mate, yo, oh, welcome in, and he's like doing all of like the typical barman stuff, like cleaning a glass. He, he waves, he's like, oh, we got another one, a bunch of those fans of the show here. Come in, come in. Yep, come yep. welcome to the Duck and Cider. Thanks. Uh, I'll get you in We just want to like look out uh, upstairs, just check out the view. Oh, I'm afraid all the rooms are taken at the moment, I'm afraid. Uh, Really? Nah, sorry mate, it's very popular time. I can't persuade you to, uh... Well, you just want to have a look out the window? Yeah. Ooh, and he looks over, and he's like, oh, Jeb! Uh, and like, Jeb's like, alright mate, he's like, some folks want to look out your window, is that alright? And he's like, well, and he sees you, he's like, oh, is this guy? Give me a persuasion check. Oh, okay. You're pretty good at persuasion. Um... Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> 27. Holy crap. He's like, no, oh, all right then, go on, you can have a look out there. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Jeb. Go on. Thanks, we're not here often, you know, we just want to scope exactly. out. Exactly. I'll come up, I'm, he comes up with you, he's like, you know, just be safe. Yeah. And, uh, right. yeah, right. you, you guys head upstairs, and it's a small squat room with, like, a little window that looks out onto the main sort of village square. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys can get up there quite easily, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Can you scout for Franco? Yeah, sure, give me a perception check with advantage. Yeah, I'll do the same. 26. 26. 18. Can um, we get one as well? Well, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go with them. Yeah, it's um, up to you. You don't have to. Absolutely not. I was not. thinking that I would watch them go up and see them look out, and I would try to follow their gaze. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so you head out into the town and stuff like that. Um, in that case, when you... So you got... What was your perception? 26. 26? Uh, yeah, 24. 18. 18. In fact, all of you, the three of you, now that you've got this height up here, uh, you can see Franco trying to sneak into the large tent, the green and gold tent. Um, you can see him trying to sneak inside of it, basically. Um, and he's he, moving like, his way around the back. back of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's actually watching for these, like, brutish guards to, like, turn away, and then he's, like, ducking through. And he seems to be pretty adept at hiding. If you guys didn't have the height advantage, you would have struggled <clears> to <throat> find him. When you give me an insight check to see if you yeah. can see where their gaze is going and things like that. Um, can we you see? You have so many dice, so, so like, many. it's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's a 13. 
13. Can so you're trying to watch their eye. Yeah, you can. Are you trying to stay hidden in the crowd um, as well? I'm, I'm going to try to signal at them. Okay, so you kind of like give a look can and I you can see her like that. Go like this. <laughs> I'd say with that, like, yeah, you can probably make a, a, a guess that they're going to be at the, the the big golden green tent, okay. um, and you make your way there. Now it does; it has like guards kind of positioned all around it, um, but there's definitely like an opening at the back. But yeah, you'd have to sneak past the guards. So do you want to tr- use a spell, or do you want to try and stealth your own way? I would way? like to try to sneak in. Okay, give me yeah. a stealth check, one hundred percent. Oh jeez. Uh, that's a 10. Okay, I rolled natural 20. So as oh you kind God. of, you wait for a moment and you watch as a guard turns to talk to his friend and then you take a few steps, um, but just coming around a corner, you didn't expect it like a squawking chicken, like bah, 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 and you're like, ah shit. And the guy turns around, he's like, oh miss, what are you doing? Um, and they're like, who, who are you? Oh, um, excuse me, I was, uh, I, I lost my way. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going. Um, well, it's just, no, no, this tent's off limits, I'm afraid. All the village and that's back right around there. Oh, and yeah. then as you're kind of talking, Bob comes around. He's like, hello, mate. Bob. Yeah, it's sure. It's been a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? And they're like, oh, do you know her? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yes, my friend. Yeah, we're, we're very close. Um, you, you see, Bob, um, I, I was a little lost. I was walking around and, and I heard that my, my friend went into the tent. Mm. Um, is are it you looking for Cam? Uh, well, yeah, I'm looking oh, yeah, for Cam. Sorry, right. sorry, right. right, lads. Sorry, right. she's, she's with me. Is Cam here already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, well, let me let me pop my head in first. Okay. Because um, he's having his lunch. He doesn't like being disturbed. I understand. So, let me just let me. And he like he like goes up to the side entry. He's like, Mr. Buckland, Mr. Buckland. And then you just hear uh, what? And he's like, I've got somebody. I've got your friend to see you. And there's like a what friend? He's like, y- your friend. She's out here. She knows the password. And he's like, oh, uh, okay. Give me a minute. And then he's like, okay, let her in. And then he's like, yeah, all right, do you want to pop inside? Yeah, that, that'd be awesome, that'd be and great. Like, he holds it aside and you step in. The tent inside is uh, it's way more elaborate than you thought, actually. It seems almost larger on the inside than it, it did appear. Uh, large, lavish, almost like a double bed that seems to have kind of been almost like conjured out of like some sort of substance like it kind of floats in the air. Uh, there's actually a vanity with a large mirror and you can see what looks almost like makeup and things like that kind of placed around it. You can see a, a perfect replica of Cam's outfit like hung up on like a, a small kind of like wooden sort of frame. Um, and a number of books as well, like uh, covering like almost like a little coffee table. Okay. And then there's actually a, a small like a divided part of the tent with like these tall divides. And you can see a figure uh, behind them and you just hear Cam's voice kind of say like, just wait out there a minute. Um, why don't you give me a perception check? Okay. Um, that is 22. 22. You're looking at this and the screen is kind of bending the light a bit. The person who's behind that screen is not a man. It's a woman. Um, but then you can kind of see a few things change and stepping out from behind the curtain is Cam Buckland. He's like, I don't know you. You're not my friend. Who are you? How'd you get in here? Uh, well, so I'm very good friends with Bob and also Cam as well. He like looks at you. He's like, no. I don't know you, so you're not friends with Cam Buckland. Mm. And like makes this face. Let's let's be honest with each other, just for a moment. I know Cam, and Cam would like to meet you. Would you be interested in this? There's a moment of a pause, and then there's just like, <clears throat> no. You can tell that idiot to get out for his own good. It's only going to bruise his ego if he stays here. I'm doing great work. And I'm making a good bit of coin. He can keep his little adventures. But he should know that this is all... Hmm. Tell him you reap what you sow. Okay. Um, I would like to just warn you before I leave that if you continue this act, uh, that, that there might be consequences. Cam's life isn't the safest. <laughs> of course, you've probably bought into all of his heroic nonsense <coughs> as well. Listen, somebody as great and powerful as me doesn't need to worry about things like that. You just trot back to that pathetic performer and you just let me carry on with what I'm doing. And what's your name? <laughs> I'm Cam Buckland of Cam and Company. Of course you are. Um, uh, d- did I see... So... As you get into the room with your high perception check, yeah. 
there was a figure. <coughs> you didn't notice them when you first came in. They'd actually been hidden behind um, the uh, the mirror, basically, like this like like large freestanding mirror. They're not there now. If they entered, they've left again. Okay. It seems that like your conversation, like you probably, you maybe hear like a quick rustle of the flap as you basically reveal that this isn't the real cam and whoever it was has vanished. Okay. Is there an item that uh, is, um, uh, I guess, um, high in value that I can swipe as I walk out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's like probably like uh, kind of silver laden hairbrushes and like uh, makeup compacts and things like that. And in fact, actually probably the most expensive <laughs> thing you can see is on the bookcase just behind <coughs> this fake cam. You're pretty sure there's a spell book. Okay. Like you recognize the kind of font on the front, the kind of gilded kind of curving uh, edges. You're pretty sure that's a, a wizard spell book. Okay. Um, and that they fetch they fetch some good coin to the right people that you know. Okay. I want to try to swipe that as. So you're going to like head out the main entrance, like brush past them. Give yeah. me a sleight of hand check. Yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> Five. Okay. <laughs> so as you make a kind of like deft swipe. Uh, there is, you hear the sounds of a spell being cast from behind you. Um, um, and you basically, the spell book whisks out and just lands in their hands. And they're like, no, 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 none of that. Okay. And she's like, if you're so desperate for coin, maybe I could give you a job. You seem quite adept at getting into places. A job? Yes, I'm always looking for talented people to join the company. If you're really friends with Cam Buckland, I don't know, you wouldn't be acting alone. He wouldn't have sent you in here, I imagine. He's too selfish for that. I would treat my people very well, as you've seen, if you know Bob. I do know Bob very well. Bob and I go <laughs> way back, actually. Perhaps so. You're obviously from around here, I suppose. But I treat my people very well. If I were to bring some of my friends over here, would you give all of us jobs? <laughs> if by friends you mean that idiotic human, no. Um, but if there are other people in your line of work, I would guess, I could definitely use you. There's mm. always uh, uh, an absent-minded noble in a manor house somewhere that likes to enjoy a show, takes his guards with him, leaves a, a house undefended, perhaps. And what is it that you need? <laughs> I need people that can break in and take things of value. I don't mind treating, and she gestures to the outside of the tent, the common folk are good enough, I don't want to affect them, but I've had my fill of pretentious nobles that pretend to be your friends. Let's just say I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of uh, payback now and then. Okay, name the person and the object and I'll see what I can do. Oh really? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, what's your name? My name's Vithan. Very well, Vithan. After the show, come and speak to me. The next town we're going to be traveling to, there's a noble I have in mind. And uh, yes, I think that that could be beneficial to us. Okay. I'm going to, I think at this point, head back mm -hmm. and um, explain to... These guys. To everyone. Okay, perfect. You reap what you sow. Okay. Uh, so she comes back, so if I think comes back to the town, you guys have been watching, you see her enter the, the tent, she seems to have a conversation with the guards, head inside, and then uh, leaves, you know, maybe a minute or two afterwards. Do you impart the fact that it was a woman? Like, do, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll let you guys know okay. that. Give you like most of the details. There's almost like a transformation, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, Cam Buckland has pissed off a woman. <laughs> Who has decided on this plan of revenge? That's that's ass assumptive. Any particular woman <coughs> come to mind? No. <laughs> what? There's no women that have any long-lasting grudges <coughs> against me. Everyone <coughs> you've ever slept time. with? Well, of course I've slept with many, many women. But no one that would change form, I don't think. A performer. Yeah. Hmm. A wizard performer. Do yeah. we remember if <coughs> Trixie yeah. is a wizard? <laughs> you remember that the great and powerful Trixania Darkmagic <coughs> was a illusionist of quite well re repute. And after the performance, she uh, was performing in the town square and Cam <coughs> ruined it. Oh shit, yeah. yeah. And she literally <laughs> left the scene swearing revenge. It's hazy. I don't you remember really, that. You really, really annoyed that woman. 
And she knows all of us. That's why. How does she take my she form? Re she remember she all four of you from the She's an illusionist. Oh, she'd take my form because obviously it would earn her the most money because I'm She's the hero. <laughs> making a lot of money pretending to be you. Yeah. And probably making a fool of you. I should pretend to be me and make a load of money. Pretend to be I've her. I've got the business mind for this. Remind me what you said the password was. Um, it, it's... Was it Cam's dick is very small? It is, that's uh, correct. <laughs> okay, um, I said Cam's dick is very small. <laughs> so, what do you think her show is about? <laughs> Look, if we burn it all to the ground, we, we don't have to see it. We don't have to see it. It's probably terrible anyway. I mean, she's angry at you, but not us. Trixie is clearly just making money because she got offended. She's not this harming anyone, except Can't... Cam's street cred. But if she's doing this, she is in danger from people who are after you. She'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so what would you guys like to do? Are you guys going to do more or do you want to wait until this show, <clears throat> basically, and then try and approach it? Do you guys want to watch it? Do we see the guys who came in in the... In the... Yeah, they seem to be trailer. pottering around. Their wagon's just tucked up behind a building. Uh, it's kind of a large uh, canvas wagon, sealed back, um, little kind of step at the front with the horses that are now munching on some hay. And yeah, they just seem to be really happy. They're like smiling all the time, going around like, oh, lovely to meet you. Yes, we're so excited to see the show. When is Cam Buckland going to be here? Uh, and they just keep going around and like talking about that. Are they asking too many questions and looking around mm. a lot? Scoping the they're, not ask, they're not doing any of that. They are just... Trying to blend in, it seems. Mm. Um, we're going to take a quick break because I know you're sniffling away and I'm, I need to get a drink and stuff like that. So hopefully we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we will be back in five, ten minutes. So we've got we to do the ads and stuff, right? We do. Okay, we do. so we'll see you guys in five minutes. Thank you, Josh, for doing all the tech so far. Thank, Thank you once again, Alyssa, for joining us. And we'll be back in five, five, ten minutes. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a bit.
Hello, thank you very much guys for joining us back here on High Rollers. We just had a bit of a drink, we had a bit of a cough because some of us are quite Sorry. ill. No, I'm it's Ill. fine, no, you go and cough when you need to. <laughs> I had um, a scoot. You had a scoot. scoot. The Penny Arcade offices, by the way, are amazing, amazing. Yeah. you just have to say. They go, <laughs> so these good. guys have scooters to get up scooters. and down. Scooters by the door. Yeah, yeah. it's Great. amazing. <laughs> like, scooting around. It's idea. such a cool office. Uh, seriously, once again, thank you so much to Alyssa, Josh and Jerry for helping make this happen. Uh, so we, I, we didn't miss a stream with you guys. I've seen a few people in chat asking if this is canon, part of the story. Yes, this is a regular High Rollers episode, so Alyssa's <laughs> character, Viathon, is now in the High Rollers universe, really so awesome. you are now part of it, uh, and I hope that maybe people will do some fan art as well, we can get that as well, we oh can gosh, share that with that you. Would be oh so yeah, cool. we, we've got amazing fan artists, yeah. it's amazing. We do. Incredible. Um, so, once again, yeah, check out C-Team, check out Penny Arcade, as per the little uh, box and stuff like that. Uh, right, let's crack back on. So you guys have arrived in this uh, uh, town called Merlot little village um, where there is some sort of show being put on by a group calling themselves Cam Buckland and Company um, and there is almost like a cosplay gathering of, of Cam Bucklands uh, yeah. and, and other characters like uh, Jute, Laura, Trelamar, etc. And the PCs have arrived and they've begun finding out that not everything is obviously as it seems. There is a fake Cam Buckland that Viathan, uh, who is a, uh, would you describe it, you're like a thief black markety type who's yeah. kind of learnt a little bit of magic uh, and has been sent out on a clandestine mission by one of the sort of master wizards. Um, she's discovered that, yeah, there is definitely some sort of figure who is pretending to be Cam Buckland, a woman, a performer, uh, and the party have deduced uh, or suspects that it may be Trixania Dark Magic, a figure that uh, Cam Buckland has run into in the past. But there's also a couple of other things going on. You've spotted Franco Sunset, an ex-member of the council, uh, member of the Broken Sky, uh, currently has a bounty on his head, um, and Jen he seems to be here as well, and the last time you saw him is he went to uh, the tent where Cam Buckland was supposed to be staying and snuck his way inside. Uh, you also know that there is two strange figures who brought wagon to town who are now just kind of enjoying the village and seem to be a little bit suspicious. So what would you guys like to do? Mm. Set fire to everything. Yeah, do you want to do that? That is your way of doing things, Kim. Mm. I'm worried. <laughs> you're looking at me like, are you serious? Well, yeah. I was just thinking that that would actually be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, that will happen. Like, I'm almost certain. As soon as we roll initiative, it's going to be Fire Queen over here. Like, <laughs> My concern is, Viathan went into the tent. Mm -hmm. So did Franco. Did you see anyone else? Um, very briefly. Very briefly, I saw someone, and then they were just gone. They vanished. So they know but what if... you know. If Franco was trying to sneak into the tent, then that means he's not with. He thinks Trixan. that that was the real Cam Buckland, and was trying to kill Cam Buckland. But now, if he was in the tent with you when you were talking to he the fake Cam, he knows that that's not, and he's now on the look for us. That's the true. Real. He's seen us. So we got to be eyes on. I don't don't mind me. I'm just rolling some dice. Hopefully she will be safe though now mm. if, if they know that that's, she's not the real one. But it, we don't know if he's connected to. Oh, that's true. The... Mm. Why are there so many people out to get you, Cam? I know. I, it's just because <laughs> I'm so popular. I think. That's if it wasn't for my blood oath, I would probably hurt you too. Yeah. Well, it's a shame we have that blood oath. <laughs> real shame. Okay. <clears throat> just dust <laughs> It's all the alcohol. It's, it's the air that's getting to my voice. It's like long, long days on the road, like yeah. everyone's feeling a bit run down. <laughs> Except Juto, Juto seems fine. Hard, hard, hale and hardy. Should we check out this wagon? What do you reckon? Yeah, is it behind, it's behind a building, right? <laughs> it's just been parked behind like a little lodging, okay. a little building. Maybe Franco was, did he exit with them? He, did Franco look like he went anywhere near that wagon? You don't know. We don't know. You saw him in the crowd, and then he vanished, and then the next time you saw yeah. him, he was sneaking into the Cam Buckland tent. So I mean, at this point, you don't Where's know. the tent and the wagon? What is it close uh, opposite by? Ends. Or? Opposite ends of the village. Right. So, like, the village, there's no walls, so it's kind of just like <clears throat> buildings scattered here and yeah. there. Uh, tents, like I said, have been pitched all around, but you've got like this one mage one. The one thing that you guys have, have seen as well now, it's been pointed out, there is like a stage that's been built on the outskirts of the village as well, like a kind of wooden thing with like canvas backing and things like that. Um, and that's just separate. But the wagon is basically just parked near where you guys arrived, actually. Um, it's just like parked behind a little building. I'd say Viathan. You can see the guys walking around as well. Proven herself to be trustworthy. She's gone in there and given us quite useful information about Trixie. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, but let's think about the bigger picture here. 
We've just killed the fire giant. We saw the airship. We were meant to go on our way to Talismar. And as, as amazing as it is seeing all the Cam Bucklands and all the Trells and all the Alora's cosplays and the Jutos, I guess, uh, we could just leave. You wanted to kill her? Nah, it was just a joke. I was drinking. I do mean, you, do we... you guys want to give me an insight check? What, on me? Yeah. 17 plus 7? <laughs> 24. Are you, are you saying this because you don't want to see the show, or are you saying this because you genuinely think you should get back to Talos Because I know Cam Buck... <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying it because I don't want to be embarrassed by the show. Okay, you're right, okay. That's Because I figured that that was the Cam But Buck also I don't want to die and we okay. could get away while, okay. you know, Franco's looking for us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Cam, if you leave, Trixie will still be in danger. She she's not admitting that she's not you. Maybe, oh yeah, Franco may not have seen the transformation. She, she, didn't, she didn't say what her real name was. She still refuses to say what her real name is. The only reason we know it's her is because we know her. She's still in danger. It's you owe her that much. We've she, just she, left a town filled with dwarves in a horrible mess. We don't want Trixie to be in danger because of us too. All right, <clears throat> this is what we do, I reckon. We wait till the show, and then before the show can actually start, we get rid of her illusion. I would like to see some of her material. No, we get rid of it before it starts. That'd be interesting. What did you exactly do to Trixie to get this kind of treatment? It was a very minor intrusion. I'm going to stand very purposefully on your foot. Ah. Right, we totally messed up her show. <clears throat> it was a performance. She tried to mess our performance up first, I will say. So she, she tried to make our performance bad. And so we retaliated. I see. Okay. By we, you it definitely means... get the intent that it, he means it, I. Okay. <laughs> like, like the way that he's like the look of these two is like that's an I. Okay. <laughs> and have you thought about correcting this? Well, she did it first, so I think it's you know tit for tat, done. We're even. I face palm. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the show. The, the image of Cam Buckland that you've been given definitely is kind of you're starting to see where a lot of the things you heard have come from now. Like he is, uh, he's been involved in heroic deeds, but the character that the descriptions came never seemed to match up with those deeds. So okay. you're starting to get like this picture of who he is. Okay. Um, what would you guys like to do? Do you want to check out the wagon, or do you want to just wait okay. and and? We've, we've got some time. Why don't we out. check out the wagon? You want yeah. to? I know you see you want to. Let's see. go paint okay. this wagon. So you guys <laughs> make your I, way I, down. Can I cast pass without a trace oh. on all this? First? Oh, okay. So you're gonna cast pass without a trace. So every has plus ten bonus to stealth checks. Nice. And you leave no physical tracks. Um, you guys make your way down, and the crowds like with the pass without a trace and everything else. You actually seem to blend in really well. Um, you make your way through. I'm just gonna. Uh, Especially in my cute little cloak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, everybody give me a stealth check, just so I know for beating some perceptions. With a plus 10 as well, right? Yeah, with an yeah. additional plus 10 to your normal bonus. 31. 31 I have too. never been seen. Okay. 26. 26? 24. 24, you guys are all good. You guys actually make your way through and you kind of, in the, f you know, worrying about whether like Franco or some of these other characters may see you, kind of like split up and then meet back up and things like that. You make your way around to the back of this building. Again, squat little thatched roof cottage kind of thing. You can see a few kids playing around like on the outskirts of the town, running around tents. Um, you can, like, the smells of farmland and things like that. This wagon uh, looks really well made. It looks like it's been, you know, a good merchant traveler's wagon, solid wheels, no dents, no marks. Um, and the back of it, you know, where there would be like crates and things loaded, it actually has like a, almost like a very, uh, I'm trying to think, like a Western style, like the arches with the canvas backing, so you can actually sit inside it. But that's all being done up, and there is heavy sort of like big uh, toggles which keep it all sealed behind. Mm. Um, and the canvas looks very thick. How do we get in? Without leaving a trace. Are there a lot of people around us right now? No, it's pretty quiet. Right. Okay. Um, can we hear like if anyone's in there? Yeah. Uh, you can be a perception check. Yeah, I'd like to listen to see. Yeah, of course. Natural one. <laughs> You're kind of distracted because you watch and there's a really cute little Elora that runs past, like a little girl with the dress and she's got like flowers in the hair and it's it's pretty adorable. Um, tiny, I, tiny. I would druidcraft a little flower and give it to her. While she's just like, ah, 
she like takes it. She's like quite young. Um, she gets like shuffled off. Uh, the, the, the parents like smile at you like you know when you're a cool cosplayer and you know you go past the parents are like no oh, good job thanks for making my kids day uh. <laughs> 21 21 on the perception um I didn't I'm not looking oh, you're, not, you're not looking okay uh, just look at yourself perception yeah. that would be uh, 16 16 I like it like you're super pro with the surface as well mm, like sliding up and down between all your stuff it's nice <laughs> I like bringing, bringing technology to the game uh, so 21 you listen really closely. Dead silent. I do not think there is anyone in there. At least, it is silent. Dead silent. I know. Thank you, Jeter. I'm gonna go underneath the wagon and see if there's any sort of hatch or anything like that underneath. Uh, okay, yeah, you go underneath, you start crawling, uh, you get like grass stains and things like that as you're kind of going over the okay. field. But the, there is no hatch at the bottom of the wagon. It's like a solid, good, sturdy oak. Um, what you do notice, though, actually, is a bit of an interesting idea. There's a stamp, uh, maybe made by whoever made the wagon. Um, uh, manufactured in Greybell is the, is, the, is the stamp. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. Uh, this is bad. Uh, so this, this, could be, this could be Karen's cohort. Like it's his men. I mean, Juto, you could just get under here and, and cause a little little flame. Just set it ablaze. With you? No, I'll get out, obviously. <laughs> but, you know, it's not a good wagon. Oh no, it's a fire. Someone left the torch on. <laughs> Someone <And> left the <laughs> torch on in the middle of the day. Yeah. Like 2, 3 p.m. <laughs> oh yeah, just put the torch in. <laughs> you know how easy it is. Um. <laughs> Does anybody have like fine traps or like? It's just magic? Uh, investigation. Yeah. yeah. yeah investig if you want to manually search for traps, it's investigation. Yeah. Can we can we look at like the toggles and stuff on the? Yes, on you the can. Back of the... you do, if you're looking specifically at the toggles, you don't need to make a, an investigation check. But anybody who wants to search for traps, investigation check. I got one. Okay. Six. One. Six. Hopefully, rogue. <laughs> no. Not good. One. <laughs> oh, and there's one. Well. Like, like, yeah, it's I mean, like, they, how could they trap a wagon, right? Like, you're kind of looking at it, like, like what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you look at the toggles, um, you almost go out to reach them, but you can see that there's, uh, they're beautifully engraved. Uh, there's, uh, like, very ornate symbols of, um, creatures. Uh, you can't quite tell, like, wings, um, a couple of fangs and sort of things like that, all kind of going hmm. up and down it. Mm. So does it, does it look like it's magical, like... Yes. Yes. You suspect that each toggle mm -hmm. may have some sort of magical enchantment okay. placed on it. Cool. Can I don't I... see anything. It's a wagon. I mean... Can I cast Dispel Magic on it? You can. Give me, roll a d20 and then add your wisdom. Nine. Ah, you're pretty sure you didn't get it. Like, the magic... There's definitely... Excuse me, I'm going to burp a little bit. There is a <laughs> strong presence of necromancy magic. And you oh. can't cancel it. You, you sense that, um, that whatever it is... You probably could, but it would require more power. Like, you, you'd probably need to focus and get a better roll. Basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you must roll higher number on dice to make Thank magic you, go away. <laughs> get good. Get good, scrub. Laura, what are you doing? It's magic. It's just toggles, you just like, no, touch them. Did you touch them? No, no, no. I didn't. It's necromancy. There's magic. It's engraved. They're toggles? Yeah, the toggles can. It's they're engraved. They're not undead toggles. No, but there's an enchantment there, so we can't get in. Give me, um, give me a religion check. As you like pointing at the toggles. It's a three. It's a three. Yeah. You're doing super good. It's like a, you know, <laughs> pale wood. High roller. <laughs> like, there's definitely nothing. <laughs> toggles. Just yeah. toggles, Laura. I mean, like, yeah, if Laura says there's magic, maybe, but... I can try dispelling it. I've got dispel. It didn't work when I did, but... It's probably because you're not focusing, right? You're going to yeah. focus? You can cast dispel magic? Yeah. Plus your uh, wisdom will find. 14. 14. Uh... Nope. Not enough. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Um, you, you sense that you were close. You think that as you kind of focus the magic, you can feel the, the bonds and the strands that hold the enchantment together start to stretch and pull, but then they, <clears throat> they snap back together and your it's magic wasn't another, quite strong enough to break it. another shove. Another dispel. I'll try again. Okay. Wisdom modifier, please. 22. 22. This time, like, having watched Cam, you focus, and you can sense that there is a power here, uh, an enchantment to drain the life of anybody who touched these. Oof. And you actually now get the impression Oof. 
These are not only toggles, they're made from bones. And the engravings are of that of bats and wolves and beasts. And as you begin to break, you snap each tiny uh, component that holds this enchantment together. And you sense that, yeah, like the enchantment is now being dispelled. You've broken uh, whatever was holding this magical okay. essence together. Good job, Laura. I loosened it. Good job. <laughs> Uh, open. open. No. You open? Uh, you d I mean, you can't, because you can't change it because you saw my face react. <laughs> uh, so you go to open this thing and pull the canvas apart, and as you do, there is actually on the inside, there is a physical sort of wire that snaps, um, and a, a, a cloud of poison wafts over you. I need you oh. to make a constitution save. I guess I'm there as well, right? Uh, roll that again, that's like mega cocked. Um... 20. 20, okay. So, I'm gonna roll some damage here. <coughs> some wow, that was incredible. I rolled four fours. Uh, 16, you take eight poison damage and you feel like this poison, <coughs> you start coughing. Um, you feel it is meant to render you unconscious, but you're kind of fighting it off. Your vision goes blurry, your senses, your sinuses fill with something, <coughs> but you've managed to bat it away. Um, <coughs> And looking inside, Yay. it's a bunch of wooden boxes. Mm. Big wooden crates stacked on top of each other. Mm. <coughs> <laughs> I got poison, guys. Um, does it look... Are they all the same? Like, just loads Different of Different sizes. The same, like, there's like... two long, sort of, like, large, long crates. And then on top of those, you've got smaller crates of varying sizes. Is It'll there any around. sort of holes or slats in the crates that you can... Look like nailed down wooden caskets, like long mm. crates. Looking around for any more wires or traps on the Investigation floor. Investigation check. Two. Good. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve? Okay, you guys looking around, you can't sense any more wires or anything like that. Um, the only thing you really get is there is a strong smell of earth and clay. Um, Whatever they're transporting has probably got something involved with this those. This is weird. Uh, do we sense any Would you like to magic? Anything? Yeah, I think I might cast Mage Hand to see if we can open up maybe one of the lids from afar. Okay. Yeah, you're going to use your uh, your arcane tricks to stuff with the Mage yeah. Hand. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you want to yeah, tell these guys back. to step yeah. back? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to say, uh, I'm, I think maybe we should be cautious and I'm mm. going to open up one of these from afar. You guys okay. cool with this? Yes. How do you do that? Watch. Okay. Just watch. <laughs> and you summon it. What does your hand look like? Cause, oh no, because it's invisible because you're an arcane trickster. It's uh, completely invisible. So you kind of just gesture with your hand and you watch. It's got heavy crate on top of it, but you manage to kind of like pry open a little bit. Um, and what, you're trying to peer inside and see what's inside? Yeah. So nothing happens. Like the, the lid opens. There's no like trap or anything else okay. that goes off. It just kind of lifts, but you can only kind of open it a small amount because there's this kind of heavy box okay. on top. But looking in, give me a perception check. Sure. Just fight in at this point. Um, I'm judging. I'm judging by the laughter. That's not a good one. Not that's a like. good one. Uh, six. Six. Yeah. You're kind of peering in, but it's quite dark. Just it looks like dirt, like okay. earth, like they're transporting soil. How big um, as you guys are doing this, mm -hmm. you hear, "What's all this then?" And uh, the two men who got off the wagon and a number of, of villagers come round. They're like, they're trying to break into our wagon. And they're like pointing at you like, what, what are you lot doing? Get away, that's ours. No, it's just a routine inspection. Inspection? Yeah. By who? But by Bob. Like, Bob's not there. No, Bob, you know the guard. He's like the head of the security here. And he, told right? us, he asked us to check. Why does he ask you? Who are you? Because we're good friends. You're like dressed up like those weirdos. I know, because we're being incognito. Mm. Give me a deception check. Three. That's a three. There are six. Six. He's like, rubbish. You don't work for Bob. I've, I've seen these men walking around here. Who are you? A bunch of thieves. And you can see them starting to get a bit more agitated now. He's like, look, get away from our wagon. That's ours. That's our stuff. I, we didn't touch anything. Like The two men are just like, we're... Oh, and they come up and they can see that you've opened it. And they're just like, you, you were trying to break in here. And they like seal the... They seal the, the canvas shut. Yeah, you had a very interesting toggles on there. And they look at you and they're like, toggles? Well, they're just toggles, what are you on about? No, they're not just any toggles. Oh, I don't oh, know what no. kind of toggles you expect. They're, what, do you mean they're well made? 
No, they're made of very interesting properties. And they just hold their hands up. Look, I don't know. And they point to the rest of the villagers. Like, I don't know what he's talking about, but look, this is ours. You're not allowed it. We're going to... And they like look around. I can't believe this. We come here for a nice show and people try and break into our wagon. Well, you got to be careful. You got to leave a person. It was a test. The, the rest of the, the, the villagers all seem to be like, oh, like one old grizzly looking farmer. He's like, now listen here, young man. We don't settle for that kind of trouble room, dear. And you won't have any. I we would hope just, not. Uh, just Consider, testing the toggles. Considering this a friendly warning. We don't like any thieves or any breaking ins or anything like that. This is a nice village. This is full of nice people around here. <laughs> don't like none of that. Yeah, Biathan, and I start walking off. <laughs> You that goes for you as well, young missus. Might be fans of this year's show. I got nothing left. I'm just zoning out. Right? <laughs> you got the poison. <laughs> what that and my genuine illness. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing to say. What are you trying to prove by saying that this this town's full of nice people? With 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 a, a, a spell on the on the wagon like that, how do you how do we know that you are good people? The two the two men like spell spell. Can I insight that? Yeah, you guys can insight that. Yeah. I'm wrong with the other guys. What do you think we are? Some sort of wizards? There's no spell on here. And he like goes up and he opens up the wagon. He's like, look, there's no spell. Natural 20. Natural 20. You guys, yeah, you're, they're, they're fucking lying through their teeth. But the, the rest of the villagers are like, oh, there's no spell. Look, he's, what do you mean? How do we, what are you talking about? Touch the toggle. Don't touch the toggle. No, I'm talking to the men. Yeah, they really? touch it. It's Nothing been, happens. It's been spelled. You guys have spelled it. Do you guys still have the bones? Uh, the toggles were actually made of bone. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So do we have the, the ones that are cracked? But they are... They uh, well, they're they're it's like got... almost like a little loop, like a fabric loop okay. that they use to seal it up, okay. basically, and then you undo it, basically. They've still got... It's um, like a little tent toggle. Okay. You could still see, like, the symbols and stuff on them. Yeah, that's, a, it, that's the signature mark of, of the Wagon Maker in Greybell. What is in your crates? We're transporting some, some farming equipment, things like that. What's it to you? I mean, what? Look, you're the ones trying to break in. You know, you're turning it on us. The old farmer kind of leans forward again. He's just like, no, no, no. Look, I've had enough of this. You lot move your bloody wagon. Take it away. And we'll be keeping an eye on you strangers. You don't like strangers around these parts when they act suspicious. We don't want any trouble, all right? No breaking ins. No thievings. Everyone's going to get along just fine, right? If you don't like that kind of people... You should check their crates. And one of the wagon guys is like, fine, fine, you want to check our crates? And he opens it up and he steps inside and he pulls out one of the heavy like, struggle strains. It pulls it off, opens it up, and there's just like ceramic like jugs and things like that, like clay jugs and pots, things like trowels, um, bags of seeds and things like that. There, see? What about the one with the dirt? It's just soil, like Graybell soil, finest in the land. He's like, fine. And he takes that off and he lifts up. He like half opens it and he's like, see? And it's just soil. Open it fully. It's like, he shuts it down. He's like, no, we've proved ourselves. You're now casting suspicion on us. Why do you want to see it? We've got, we don't even know you. Why won't you open the crate? We have opened the crate. Okay. And the farmer's just like, he's like, they have opened the crate, miss. There's clearly just dirt in there. Not properly. He's like, fine. He opens it up and it's just dirt. The whole thing. Can I can, is, can I sense any sort of necromancy within the... Are you going to cast a spell or something like that? No, can I just... Is there any arcane sort of auras around? Can... You can make an arcana check, but it's kind of... You normally need magic to detect magic. You, there's something off. Like, the coloration of it's strange. Okay. But it's not something you could really... You can't know for sure if it's magic. But it's there's definitely something off. I come back, it's like, oh my god, Greybell soil? Oh, I love this stuff where I could put my hands in. Well, they don't let you in the wagon. Like, you'd have to, like, fight oh, past I these two guys. Well, no, they've, like, lifted it up, and, like, the farmer's, like, looking in, but the two men are actually standing on the inside. Can I use my Gwandao butt to, like, kind of... Well, they're going to try and stop you, so it'd be, like, a contested thing. You'd have to fight them, basically. Mm. And you've got this gathered throng of, like, villagers who are now just kind of, like, I don't know what they're talking about. It's just soil. It's a bunch of farming equipment. Let's leave it, guys. Yeah. They, they're clearly just a misunderstanding. We apologize profusely for suspicious acts. Mm. The we farmer's like, good. 
Thank you, young man. That's very kind. I'm glad that you can see sense in this. Now you lot, and he's like, put all your stuff back in that wagon. You know, park it up near my farm if you're so worried about it. I'll have my boys keep an eye out. And they're like, well, oh, thank you, sir. That's very kind. And they kind of give you a suspicious glance. And then they kind of like, and they get back on and they start getting the horses ready to leave. Okay. All right. <clears throat> There's clearly something up with that wagon. Yeah, something. That wrong. much is true, but they're hiding it very well. There's something up with that dirt. Slightly discolored. Mm. Do we wait for the show? I think we'll wait. I think and that... see if they reveal their hand. I think they're going to. I think they're waiting for Cam to get on that stage. And I it's think... not going to be Cam, it's going to be Trixie. Okay. Do I need to get onto that stage instead of yes. her? We should make sure that that wagon doesn't go anywhere near the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Is did the farmer point to where his farm yeah, was? Yeah, you can see like a little farm, like a little tiny, like little. Is crop. it near the stage? Is it somewhere near? No, the stage? it's no. it's far enough away. You know, maybe like um, I don't know, like four hundred feet or something like that. Okay. How do we stop Trixie getting on stage? And so that I can be in her place. It may require you to go into that tent and actually talk to her yourself. You're the one who offended her. We can come with you. We, you got into the tent, right? Bob wouldn't let us in. Or maybe with you. Bob, Bob let, Bob let. We can get in. Yeah, Bob's our friend now, so. Okay. We're, we're pretty close. You guys know the password. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Um, how do you feel about the password? Are you doing okay? Let's not talk about the password. <laughs> <laughs> you just say it really quickly, and I'll plug my ears. <laughs> because it's not true. Oh, obviously. Obviously. It's obviously not true. It's, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. It was it was completely completely inappropriate. Yeah. I'm gonna do it a really big was. big eye roll. <laughs> I just believe that. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like, thank you for understanding. So you guys make your way over to the tent, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys make your way over there. You can see Bob and the rest of the guards. Like uh, he seems to just be uh, sitting around. They've kind of got a couple of seats out, a couple of tables. A couple of them are sitting down playing cards. Bob's just kind of like keeping an eye out, looking around. He looks. He's like, all right, me, hello. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Um. So we wanted to just head on in there. Um. He like looks over. He like eyes you. It seems like he's unsure. He's like, what's the password? Button. We'll say uh, it. Uh, I I know where she can be. Do you know? I mean, she's told me it. Well, <coughs> Cam <coughs> has a adequately sized dick. <coughs> Incorrect. Cam has a small dick. <laughs> All right, obviously you're the real Cam. I didn't see you leave, though. I'm very stealthy. Oh, I I'm guess a performer. Uh, Come I guess on. so. All right, and he like opens it up, and you guys are, are led inside. Um, as you guys head inside, you can see. Uh, there's almost like a veil between like the main entrance and sort of the, the rest of the tent. You guys kind of step inside and the veil kind of parts as Bob closes the door. And you can see this like screened off area um, and you just kind of hear like a... <sighs> and you, you watch as like a figure gets up and you can kind of see them putting on some clothes and some sort of transmission and then Cam Buckland steps out from it. And staring at you and you two, there is just hands on the hips come out. It's just like, ah, I don't believe this in Cam Buckland's voice. Yes. She yeah. looks at you, it's just like, I told you not to bring these idiots here. I know, but Cam just really wanted to meet his number one fan. Ah, uh, fan? Please. <laughs> uh, if, you came, if you waited until the show, you would have understood that that's certainly not what's happening here. That's why what do you want, Buckland? It's why we're here. It's about the show. Yes. And as much <laughs> as you know. Have you heard about it? Uh, I kind of want you to see it personally. I well, want to see it too. Huh. Well, you might change your mind about that, Miss Jing. Mm. I think I haven't forgotten the parts you've all played in his antics. Technically, no, I, I kind of want to see the show. The time. Huh? Technically, I was in the audience the entire time. Oh, please, I remember you from the performance at the Feast of Stone as well. In You're, the audience. Yes. The entire time. You're still <laughs> an ally of him. <clears throat> Look, we're here to help. <laughs> really? Yeah. Please tell me how you're going to help us. You're not helping. Let's let's just break even here. I did a wrong. You did a wrong. No. And then you really did a wrong. No. So you, you did a wrong. No, you did a wrong first. Nope. And now you're really doing a wrong with this whole impersonating me and making money off of me thing. That's really bad. 
Uh, the money isn't coming really from you. I, I make arrangements in other ways. Uh, I don't charge for the show. The show goes all to the villages that we perform in to pay for people like Bob outside and things like that. I, I don't want to make any money off of your pathetic image. No, the joy for me is simply making you a laughing stock. A complete ridiculed figure. That's mm. enough for me. On with the show. Uh, for, have a for, good one. For the record, I'm okay with that. Good. I have a great one. Like, honestly, break a leg. I stage. will, don't worry. Yeah, have a, have a great day. Cam. Life. Fine. My life is in danger. Rolls the eyes. And because you've mm -hmm. made such a noise about your show mm -hmm. and how popular it is, your life's in danger. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to stop because you're worried about your image, of course. What, to, what else to expect from Cam Buckland? We don't actually want you to stop. No. We just wish you to swap places with Cam for this show only. <laughs> it's just a laugh. And actually the illusion now breaks. Um, and you can see in blue dress, uh, white hair kind of tied back, blue ribbons, um, this kind of delicate form, uh, straps with like potion belts and things like that. Trixania, this, this illusionist. And she just looks over and she's just like, you. <laughs> You want him to be him in the show. I'll read the lines. <laughs> this is to save your life. This is to save your life. This is too good, Cam Buckland. Uh, by e all means. Would you like the script? I can introduce you to the other actors. There are several assassins in the village tonight. She looks at you. Why would there be assassins? Cam Buckland. He is not that important enough to warrant such behavior, surely. Yeah. He was kind of a dick to you, right? Yes. So there's a good chance he's been a dick to a lot of other people. Well, you're not wrong about that. I thought you were a smart woman when you came in. Um, yes, I suppose that that's entirely possible. So what if you were caught in that crossfire? Surely an idiot like this buffoon couldn't have annoyed somebody powerful enough to employ a serious threat. He's annoyed you enough to make one of the most successful shows that has ever toured this area. Oh, oh, oh. Give me a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> with good. advantage. That was good. <laughs> oh gosh, 13. Well, that's okay. It's just, it's just like, mm, well, I suppose I am the greatest illusionist in all of the Dawn Republic, I suppose. Mm. Uh, what are we dealing with? Some hired thugs, a criminal element of some kind? Necromancy. Ne yes. Necromancy? No, that's not possible. The last necromancers were exiled. Master Mistress Fallow told me so. Oh, well, we clearly. just came across some magic, some necromancy. And yes, there are thugs here, but we don't know the extent of the danger. And if you get up on that stage and convince everyone you're Cam, like you always do, then you will be the target. Yeah. And they're in a nice little village away from everywhere else. Do you want to say something? Did you just say Mistress Fallow? Yes, Mistress Leonora Fallow, the ma Mistress of Illusion. She was my teacher. She was your teacher? Yes, of course. I'm how, an apprentice. How long ago? Oh, uh, she like, looks around. It's been uh, five or six years or so. Mm -hmm. I, I was officially trained as part of the magical school adjustments. Okay. Um, why? How do you know that name? Well, she is my mentor as well. She looks a bit incredulous. That, that's, no, that's not correct. I knew every member of our class. There was a small number of us, two or three. Well, by mentor, what I mean is I wasn't actually in the school. She just took me under her wing. Our eyes go wide, like, no, no, that's... That's breaking all sorts of rules. That, she, no, she, yes, uh, really? I mean, I, I, I hate to break it to you, but I mean, she, I, we almost didn't really have a choice. She, and, she, she took me in when I was very young. And she sent you to help him? No, to help you actually. Oh, really? Yes. Um, she said to keep Cam safe, and what I believe by that is to help, he, to help you and keep you safe. Oh. All right, fine. I'll do this switch. I will wait from the wings. You will need to play the part, of course. 
Yes. <laughs> I mean, I am Cam Buckland. Mm, quite. How different from the source material could it be? So is this just this, this, uh, these necromancy thugs? That's the only threat we're dealing with? There is also Franco Sunsitter. The traitor from Talos Val? Uh -huh. He was spotted in your tent earlier. What? I was changing. Really? We suspect uh, that he was potentially looking for Cam. If you've convinced Franco that you're Cam, hmm. he must have seen that it wasn't and left. All right. Well, I'm loath to say this. Sounds like if you go on the stage, you'll be quite the target yourself, Buckland. Yeah. I could just create an illusion of you from behind the stage. That could play the part instead. And then if they do attack, you won't be at risk. You'd have to be the most powerful illusionist. I'm more world. than capable of creating your miserable little image and doing a pathetic dance around on a stage. I'm not sure you'll do it accurate enough. Well, oh, believe me, I can. I've been doing it long enough. People of course, with some amusing changes. Such as? Well, nothing. Just You'll see, won't you? We're only here to save your life, that's all. <laughs> and I'm still going to get pleasure out of making you suffer, but perhaps I won't put you in complete danger, at least. That's so, thoughtful. <laughs> these fellows are supposed to attack, you think, during my performance, yes? Most likely. Yeah, very well. I'll have to instruct the other actors to be careful. Uh, we'll wait in the wings. You wait in the scouting, wings. Scouting, yes. and if anything untoward happens, we'll spring into action. Should we warn the villagers, or...? We should warn... If we yeah. tip them off, they may know that something's up, surely. Perhaps Bob and his team? The they could evacuate force. them quite quickly, I imagine. Usher them away. I think if we tell everybody, word will spread fast. Mm. And the people that are doing this will catch on. All right. Very well. But yes, we'll inform the security guards. All right. Your security guards. Yes, yes, yes. I'll tell Bob and those. Uh, they, they may not look like much, but they're quite capable, really. I... Good. And sure to pay them quite well, and I've made sure they get some training, some militiamen we encountered. Prepare um, them to evacuate the village and yes. keep them safe. Well, I, I think we can direct them away from the stage area, and hopefully we can deal with whatever ma matters complicate. Um, do you wish to get ready here, or shall I meet you at the stage? How about we make one final agreement? Uh, In return for saving your life, if indeed it is threatened, this Cam Buckland and Company show comes to an end, and you find some other source material. Mm. Or you change the show and really praise me. <laughs> That's you know, not you know. going to happen. Another light fall would need to occur before that happens. Um, mm. Very well, I will change the show. I extend a hand. Spit in it. Oh god, it's no. Absolutely way. not, by the gods. It's Clean the that hand immediately. The... I wipe it. <laughs> She like prestidations like a cloth around it. <laughs> Leaves it like nice and soap and soapy hand clean. She's like, mm -hmm. she shakes her hand. All right, we have a deal. Then we'll be even. Yes, I suppose. On with the show. Yes, the show must go on. Very well, I will meet you later. Uh, cool. Do you guys want to make any preparations? Um, before we leave, mm. um, yes, I want to say to her, please. so, uh, strangely enough, Mistress Fallow also, um, was hoping that I would grab a, a book of spells for her. Um, <laughs> is there, is there a way that, do you know which book I'm talking about? I'm, I'm sure you do. I have mine and another in my collection. Yeah, is, is, it would just be a, just, you'd be lending it to us. Do you want to give me a deception check? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Super sneak. Uh, 16. 16. <laughs> Are you sure Mistress Fellow asked for a book in my possession? She did. She said that there was something in there that she really needed. Um, and she said it, specifically you. It cost me quite a lot of money to procure it. It's an ancient book from First Light. And she goes over to a cupboard and she opens it up, pulls out like a display case, unlocks it with a key, and a beautiful silver and platinum book uh, engraved with eyes and kind of mirage imagery. That's very similar to her description. <sighs> there you go. Oh, thank you. Please inform Mistress Fellow that I'm happy to help. She'll, she'll appreciate this, and, and I'm sure we'll give it back to you as soon as possible. Please do. It was a, it was a prized part of my collection. And yeah, you, you have a, a very impressive book of illusionary spells. 
Score. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, do you guys want to make any preparations before this uh, this performance? I may actually. Mm -hmm. If anyone else wants to go first. Hey, do you guys want to do anything like in particular, like play, cast spells, do any kind of rituals, or like go and do other stuff in the village? What do you guys want to do? Brain no worky, Mark. No, that's fine. You you take some time. What about you? <laughs> um, I'd like to explore the town and see where the the CD area is. Okay. Um, and try to see how much the book is worth. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of shops in this village. It's quite small, so there's only like a, really a blacksmith, a general store. Um, but what you, you do happen to know is that there's always somebody in these towns that is connected to the larger networks. Although the thieves' guilds are kind of been a bit diminished by the Broken Sky, there's still a few operatives around. Okay. Um, and you actually, uh, there's a guy uh, that you kind of get talking to, and you kind of go up to the tavern and you speak to a few people. Um, and his name is Tem. And he tends to deal with these sorts of things, and uh, especially, you know, he passes the knowledge on. And uh, he meets with you in the Duck and Cider. And uh, he's just like, oh, what? So, I hear that you've got something of particular interests. Oh, yes, I, I happened upon this book, and I just wanted to see um, exactly how much it's worth. Oh, let me have a look here, he says. Oh, very nice craftsmanship. Precious metals, gemstones. The magical content I don't really understand, but it's quite impressive, quite full. Uh, easily, well, a thousand gold, I would imagine. A thousand gold, okay. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Is this something that interests you? Uh, well, I can sell it onto the network, but I would need to take my fee. If you're heading towards the city, there'll be dealers that will work with you directly. Mention my name, they might give you a bit of a better price. Oh, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. It's always nice to make a contact in the network. Yes, yes, and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other around. This is a very small industry. If you obtain anything else, bring it my way. Yes, sir. And he kind of like gives you a tip. He's got like a squawky eye. Gives you a tip <laughs> of the hat. Uh, and yeah, you make your way out. Yeah, okay. it's a thousand gold. Nice. I'm going to go to the front of the stage mm -hmm. and... You can see that it's actually being set up. You've got like a few laborers. Uh, the background is like uh, the skyline of Talis Val. Um, and there's like a few wheeled props, like little buildings and doorways that they can wheel onto the stage and things like that. And it has a whole canvas back area. I'm going to cast Magic Circle. Okay. Which is a, a minute casting time. Mm -hmm. And I create a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder of magical energy centered on a point. Okay. Just like the center of the stage. Center stage. And around it, in 10 feet. Uh, glowing runes appear wherever the cylinder intersects with the floor or any other surface. Okay. So it is visible. However, I get to choose one of the following types of creatures. I'm going to mm -hmm. choose undead. Okay. And basically, it affects that creature okay. in some way, in a bad way. Yeah, they can't. I think they can't pass through it, and they have yeah. disadvantage if they yeah. try and attack. Good yeah. Okay, cool. And that so lasts you do that an hour. Okay. So, so you, are you going to do that just before the performance? Near, basically, near the performance time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you say? I'd like to talk to Saito. Okay. Yeah, he's just in the tavern, pounding away spirits <clears throat> as you come. He's like, ah, my little tiefling friend. How you doing? I am. Are fine. you done with your weird? Like party or something? Not quite. It got incredibly interesting. Okay, great. Is there treasure? Potentially. Okay, that's a vague answer, but sure. Carry on. There's necromancy. Oh god. Oh, don't not interested. That stuff's ugh. Have you ever been inside a tomb? Have you had to fight mummies and whites? Well, I've met you in a tomb. No. No, that was an asylum. It's different. Completely different. Uh, awful. Drain your life force away. Ugh. You sound like an expert. No, an expert in avoiding it. And there's a good reason for that. We could use your assistance. Uh, we're doing what? I will keep my eyes out, but I'm not getting involved in any undead. Fair. But if you could just assist us in keeping an eye on the crowd. Ugh. I suppose, do, do I at least get to see the show? Yes. All right. I'm in. I'll watch it. <laughs> but I'm not fighting. Even I don't I don't fight undead things. Even if I get attacked? You can take care of yourself. Look at you. You're tough. I try and give him like puss in boot eyes. No, you know, the kind of like... Mm. You're like death glare eyes. You're not puss in boot eyes. I'm <laughs> no, but I'm trying. Okay, persuasion check. <laughs> Due to his amazing charisma. Fifteen. Ah... Uh, if you look in danger, I will help you. If. I just bow slightly. Right. We'll talk more when we get back to Talisfal. 
I'm going to enjoy my cups. And he gets like two cups. Ah! Uh, Jeb, Neb, whatever your name is, more. And he like just taps it and he like piles gold. Like he reaches into his bag of holding and just like slams down a handful of gold coins. Nice. And the bartender is just like, You're a curse mate, what do you want? And he's like, he's like, Oh, I've got this. And he's like, Poor. He's like, Yep, all of it. I want all of that. You are a degenerate. Yeah, he is. Like he's, and he's just having a whale of a time. <laughs> uh, so you did magic circle. <coughs> Anything for you? No, you're just happy. Okay. So, um, I'd like to also cast invisibility on myself, like before the show okay. starts. So we'll do that. So <coughs> you guys make your way there. The crowd, the gathered crowd. Uh, sun goes down. Uh, it's just beginning to peek over. And the show begins when the moon rises and nighttime kind of sprinkles around. Being out in the countryside, the stars are just beautiful. Like the, the sky glimmers like dragon scale um, with all these different colored lights. Um, and the show begins, um, the stage is set, lights, magical lights kind of bring spotlights down onto the stage. Uh, the crowd loves the magic circle. They think it's part of the set and they're like, ooh. <laughs> and you can hear all of these kind of cries that are going out. Um, those of you who are there, uh, Elora, you see Franco in the audience just kind of watching and he's like, he's like, oh, he's like joining in, he's like chatting away with the people around him, but he's very clearly watching. Um, you see the two fellows from the wagon are also there and they're just dri drinks like sitting there watching it and stuff like that. Um, and you can see that occasionally they may look up at the moon and stuff like that, but they generally keep their eyes on the stage. The show begins uh, with a a swirl of colour, it begins to fill with mist, and you backstage can see Trixani's in her normal kind of outfit, she's weaving her hands, and these kind of tendrils of magic lash out, creating smoke and fog that fill the stage, and a big ooh comes from the audience. Um, and swirling into existence is a man in a purple cape, no face, just kind of this hooded figure rises up, um, and it begins. In the great city of Talisval, there are stories of a man that has sullied the good reputation of grand heroes such as Korak the Champion. A man so foolish and inept that his foolery is known throughout the city. That man is Cam Buckland. And the crowd are like, whoa, yeah! And like getting really boisterous and things like that. Uh, and the figure kind of disappears and the lighting changes and the background actually now changes with magic and it forms like a dungeon. And <laughs> an illusory Cam stumbles onto the stage and it looks like you, but like, it's very comical, like the nose is a little bit bigger, the chin's <laughs> a bit bigger. Uh, he's got like a goofy looking face, he gives a goofy grin. Um, and when he speaks, it's you, but a bit dumber and a bit sort of like slower and things like that. Okay. And he's just, he's like, oh, hey, we've got to go and deal with these, these broken sky guys. Come on, everyone. And then from backstage, three actors in costume appear. Uh, the first one is a tall human wearing Trelemar's costume. Clearly like painted face with a wig, uh, puppet Granomir sits on his shoulder um, and he comes out and he's kind of got like a toothy grin and a big chin uh, and he comes out and he's like, well if there aren't any ladies here I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Where are we going Cam? <laughs> and he like slaps Cam on the back, Cam stumbles forward in a slapstick manner, uh, he plants his face into like a bucket which gets stuck on his head, he stumbles around, <laughs> the crowd laugh like hysterically. Uh, following up behind from that you watch as like the door frame of this thing is smashed by an enormous purple arm with a red robe as a half orc with like tiefling horns <laughs> steps in. It's just like, Juto wanna smash! And like steps through and uh, the Cam Buckland is like, whoa, you gotta hold on Juto, there's nobody here yet. And like the, the half orc just starts smashing the ground and stomping around. Um, and then skipping from off stage, <laughs> the forest gnome you guys saw earlier, the oh drunk one, uh, comes in this kind of elaborate Elora costume, hair trailing behind it like Rapunzel entangled, like flowers all in it, just skipping like, la 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 la, oh there's no animals here, why? And like just like being ridiculously <laughs> girly and over the top. Um, and they kind of stumble into this dungeon. Uh, a number of broken sky kind of surprise them and the show goes on like the, the kind of general theme is that 
all your adventures that you guys have had, it's the twist of you guys are actually so inept and clueless that somebody else saves the day. As you break Yay! into the Broken the Sky Base, uh, <laughs> Trelomar spends the entire time trying to chat up a female member of the Broken Sky. Cam's trousers fall down at numerous times as he tries to throw daggers. Uh, Elora <laughs> turns into a small rabbit and just hops around like nibbling on boots. Uh, Juto is so possessed by rage, she breaks more furniture than actually fighting anybody. Um, <laughs> fire pyrokinetics just launch all over the place, often scorching Cam, setting his ass on fire and things yes. like that. Um, in, the, in the instance of breaking into the Broken Sky Base, Korak comes to your rescue, an illusory Korak kind of saves in and saves the day, um, and in pity invites you to the Feast of Stone, uh, yeah. and you guys then all start claiming the actors, start claiming you know credit for saving the, for destroying the Broken Sky Base. The Feast of Stone, it goes similar in a way, but again, complete reverse. This amazing illusion of Trixani performs this incredible display, um, and then as she comes off stage, she tries to give advice to the fake Cam, who is just really rude and dismissive of her. And then he comes on stage, and his performance is a mess. He actually throws a dagger at Korak, stabbing him, and then tries to... He's like, oh, an, an assassin! An assassin! Quick, Juto, set everything on fire! And the half looks like, me, fire, burn! Oh my god. <laughs> And just sets it all ablaze. Um, and this kind of goes on, this kind of like kind of show, and the audience love it. They just laugh hysterically, cheering and whooping as they go. But as the show begins to quieten down, you notice uh, the two figures uh, kind of look at each other, and then they look at two women who are now approaching and joining the crowd, and they nod to each other. Franco begins making his way to the front of the stage, um, and then as it comes to like the next big arc, Cam steps into center stage, this illusionary version, and the two women that had been flanking the sides leap onto the stage itself and they actually, their feet just stick to the walls as if they could stand on it. And they rush in. Everybody roll initiative. Oh, shit. Oh, actually, I already did this. So, <clears throat> so Cam Buckland. 20. 20. Juto. 18. 18. Elora. 16. Viathan. 16. 16 as well. And you're going to go first because I believe you have a higher deck. <clears throat> Uh, so, you watch as these two women race up, they're kind of like feet touching the side, they leap off, and as they go to hit the center stage, your magic circle just rebuffs them. Uh, you watch as their bodies kind of flung back, and you can see dirt beginning to fall out of their clothing, where, uh, like hmm. folds in their clothing, they bring their lips to bear, and you can see pointed fangs, just... <laughs> It's like, ah, where is the real Cam Buckland? And they like turn around and, and the audience are like unsure if this is part of the show or not. Uh, like, oh, he's, he's right there. And like they're pointing and they don't really seem to understand what's going on. The vampires tear into the set, pulling it down, shredding it to pieces. Uh, Trixani looks at you guys in surprise. It's just like, um, is this what you expected? Um, uh, I forgot to roll this for her. Not quite, but you should probably get out of here. Uh, so, those guys are leaping in and they're tearing into this thing. Uh, Cam Buckland. Uh, I'm going to shout, Bob, get your security team, get the village out. Okay. Like, um, Bob basically, he's like, all right, everybody, show's over, come on, let's, let's move. And he's like trying to pull them all away. I'm doing this in kind of backstage, I guess. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Shouting. Yeah, it's like a little, like, it's not really like a full backstage, but there's like wings that you can hide behind, like you've been hiding. I've been in. crouching down, mm -hmm. watching the show. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to look at one of the vampires tearing up the stage. And okay. Sneak attack. Okay. Uh, so. Sneak attack. Uh, give me a stealth check first. You don't have to pass without trace anymore. That's a two. So five. Okay. So as you're like sneaking up, ready to throw the dagger, their neck just snaps around. And as they see you, their lips curl up. And there's a faint element of recognition here. You look at these girls and they remind you of maybe sort of like teenagers, members of the Buckland family. Uh, two girls, you remember they, uh, they have names, uh, you can't quite remember them. Maybe Sari and, and uh, Leah. Uh, you're pretty sure it's them. All right, no. What has she done? It's terrible. I'm going to back away and kind of like... Consider my actions, okay. not attack straight away. Okay. So yeah, like they snap and I'm, they I'm, see I'm shocked. They see you and just grin. And they're like, ah, 
Buckland. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just muddled and yeah. confused. Okay. Nice. Do we see Cam react like that to the? I would imagine so. Yeah. I'd yeah. Imagine so. Uh, Trixani is going to go, um, and she turns around and she is going to. She summons four mirror images of herself um, and seems to prepare herself. She's like clicks her fingers and four duplicates surround her, and then she like looks. She's like Buckland, what are you doing? Kill them! And just like directs to the vampires who are now proceeding to sort of run your way. Uh, that's her go, Juto. Uh, I will go and attack. Okay, so how do you want to attack them? Currently they are like on the walls of the stage mm -hmm. and they were kind of looking into the center but now they're kind of aiming themselves towards the wing where Cam is. So I mentioned you've got like a slight rise, raised stage with props and things like that. Yeah, is there a way I can like leap up and like swing my gland out? Yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. like bat one on the Yeah, you don't even mean, I mean a, a jump for you is nice and simple. The stage isn't high enough that you need to make a check. You just kind of leap up, wham, slam the gland out into them. Fourteen. Fourteen. That is not going to hit. Um, as you kind of connect the blow, the Guandao strikes into them. They're wearing these kind of like thick kind of like robe dresses. And you can actually see that underneath they've got like leather armor. Um, and also their skin seems unnaturally tough. Mm. Um, that's my attack, isn't it? I so say you get extra attack. You get two attacks mm. with attack. Can I also cast something on my dos loot? Well? No, that so would have been the full. Instead first, of attacking, yeah. you have to do that instead. Okay, so extra, second attack with the Gwandal. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Uh, so the Gwandal this time finds purchase. Uh, so you're going to roll the Gwandal dice and double it. <laughs> <laughs> oh one. one. Double two. Double to two. Two. Yep. And then plus um, your poison. normal damage and stuff, and yeah, and the poison you can double as well. Five on the poison. Okay. So uh, that's ten poison damage. Okay. So two normal damage. Uh, plus your uh, normal like damage and stuff like that. Like what's your? Oh yeah. Um, five plus five. Plus five. Okay. So so seven. So seven seventeen. Okay. And that's the one of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you kind of jump up, you swipe the ground out, the green poison ekes out and begins to like discolor the flesh. <sighs> it hisses at you, and you watch as that wound is very rapidly beginning to heal. Mm. Uh, so, are you going to spend any bonus actions? Um, can I move back to where the um, magic circle is? So, that would need, you need to spend a key point to disengage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to do that? Is there a way I can kind of knock Cam into it as well? Cam is actually off the stage okay. in the wings. He's actually behind the vampires now. Okay. So you can step off though. It's a key point for you to disengage yeah. and you just you move into the magic circle. I will disengage. And they don't seem to be able to get close enough to you. Um, that is Juto's go. Uh, Vi Viathan. Viathan, Viathan. I, oh, I got there eventually. Either works. Either works. Okay, nice. <laughs> um, what would you like to do? So, um, can I? Can we tell which one was the original um, of of the Trixani? Yes. No, actually, no. The, these uh, there's now five, and they all seem exactly alike. And when it kind of when the spell activated, they all split out from the center, and there is not one in the center anymore. So the magic is designed that you can't tell which one is the real one. Okay. You have to guess and hope that if you wanted to hit them or do it, whatever. Okay, um, I think I'm going to uh, create a minor illusion mm -hmm. um, of Cam. Okay. Um, so that so that they are confused of which one is him okay. as well. So with the minor illusion, it's like a very simplistic illusion because yeah. it's a cantrip. So it's like a it very just, stilted yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, what I'll do is like, you can give me a deception check. Okay. Um, to see how well you can kind of, or um, performance check to see how well you can make it animate. Like okay. you're trying to animate it like Cam. Sure. So it's probably just a charisma. Uh, 13. 13. Okay, cool. Yeah, they, they're, they're kind of distracted. It's like a momentary thing of they're not really sure which one. Uh, so there's now two cams for them to face. So that was your action. Would you like to move? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to move um, kind of around them. Um, so go behind the stage and come around the other side. Exactly. Yeah, you could easily do that, okay. especially with your bonus action to dash. You right. can easily just get around the other side and you're now behind those guys. Do you want to try and hide from them or like stay hidden? Yeah, I think I'll Give me a stealth check. Great. Um, mum, 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 mum. It is. Please scroll. Um, that would be 13. Okay, perfect. Yeah, they seem to lose track of you. You kind of dash around the side, you're kind of peering around the curtain and the set, and you can see them and they're turning on this illusion and cam. Okay. Uh, so that is Vython. Elora. Um, what are the the big thugs doing? Are they... 
Have they moved at all? The like, ones the, who were with the, the guys, wagon? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They have, they've run off, actually. Okay, so it's just the vampires. Seems that... to be that these, these undead creatures that are yeah, vampires born. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said, born, you yeah. said vampires. I said vampires. <laughs> um, um, okay. I am going to go Earth Elemental and... <laughs> the tiny form of, well, not so tiny anymore, the, the form Regular of Regular size uh, form. Just erupts into rocks and stone as this enormous, bolder creature emerges from backstage, tearing half the set down with it like Godzilla. My bad. Just like... <laughs> uh, and are you charging uh, the vampires? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, nice. 20 to hit? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that hits. Uh, <coughs> oh god, can't find the right dice. Using your new stream of annihilation dice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, wizards. Wizards. So many freebies. Oh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and damage. Are you going on the for first? the same one that Juto hit, or the different? Uh, one? Same one. Same one. Twenty-seven? Did you say? Uh, no, eight, nine, ten, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 17. 17. And then I get another attack. 17, that'll hit. Yeah. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16 damage. 16 damage, okay. So it's gonna be... And I want to angle myself in the way of Cam. Okay, so you're like large form yeah, I wanna hulks be in over the way of... and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. You're kind of standing. So imagine you've kind of got like an archway which is leading into the wings. You've got like the back set. Um, and then this kind of canvas tent, which is kind of acting like the backstage. You're now standing right in front of that archway door, um, just kind of looming over them, basically, trying to divert their attention. And the uh, cam and the illusion are just behind is that, it, basically. Does cam have a path to get to the circle? Uh, he would need to go round backstage where Viathan went and then come out the other side. Right. But they would have to do the same to get to him, right? Okay. Uh, they would need to come back round past Viathan to get to him currently. Okay, or, okay. that's yeah, fine. That's okay. as, far, as far as you know, yeah. as far as you know. Um, so that's what you do. Uh, the, the vampire that you hit, you slam these huge boulder fists down onto it. Uh, your attacks count as magical, right? Yep. Yeah. So the, the, the blows smash in and you can see bone break and snap and then it like begins to heal and recover and regenerate as well. Uh, so that's you guys go. Da, 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 da. That's that's go. Cam Buckland. Me. You're on the side. Give me a perception check. Okay. That is a nineteen. Okay. Uh, you hear like the sound of ripping canvas, um, and as you turn around, this little halfling fellow steps through the rip. And it's Franco, and he emerges like onto the side of the thing, and he's got a hand crossbow. He looks at you, and he's just like, I'm "Really sorry, mate. Falan is really pissed." And he fires the crossbow bolt at you. That is going to be a do, 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 mm -hmm. twenty-five to hit. Yeah. Okay, you're going to need to give me a Constitution saving throw, please. Natural twenty. Natural Sweet. twenty. Nice. So you're going to take six points of damage as this crossbow bolt thuds into you. Yeah. And you feel this like heavy, your body starts to feel a bit numb Duh. and sleepy. You kind of shake your head like the sight of the, these young Buckland girls like as vampires is kind of shaking you. And you're like, no. And it's like you can feel it trying to make you fall to sleep. But you shrug it off and he looks, oh, actually, sorry. It's more points of damage. I forgot he would. I know he wouldn't get sneak attack yet. Uh, yeah, you kind of like, he's like looking at you like, ah, damn it. And he's loading another bolt um, and he just steps back outside the tent again. Um, out of your field of vision, uh, your vision, uh, division. The vampires go. Uh, first of all, one you see that its wounds begin to heal up. Um, they look around. They can see this giant form. They look around. They can see the two cams. One of them, the uninjured one, darts around the other side and is going to come running past you. You're going to get attack of opportunity because it doesn't know that you're there. Huh. Uh, so it goes to run past you. So you can make an attack uh, with one of your weapons. Yep. Um, um, I think I'm going to whip out my short sword. Okay. So you and then plunge it into this thing. You're kind of almost like hiding, and as it runs past, you get a free swipe at it as it just like doesn't know you're there. Great. Okay. Um, and you have advantage because it's currently surprised as well. Yay. Okay, so that would be a 23. No, that's easily going to hit. Yeah, the blade <laughs> pierces in. Nice. You get sneak attack damage as well. Um, sneak attack is... Um, what level of rogue what are you? Uh, what ten? level rogue? Yeah, I'm 10. Yep, so let's look that really That quick. is... Have you got it there? I think it's pretty high. It's like 5d6, yeah, I think. I think that's nuts. Yeah. Uh, I should get some more rogue levels. It's a 3 at level 5. Here it is. Um... 
10th level, 5d6. 5d6? 5d6. That's awesome. That's a lot of damage. I have. Have you got enough? I've got them over here. <laughs> Alyssa's is like I have all the I dice. Have the dice. Um, okay, so that would be eight, ten, thirteen. Thirteen on top uh, of on top of the two, so fifteen, and then I get an extra one, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. From um, the short sword. So is that up to fifteen? So that would be 20. 20, 20 damage. Yep, yep. You plunge the short sword into one of their necks. Um, it kind of uh, it stumbles uh, and then it turns its eyes on you, lips bared. This kind of woman with like pale skin and red eyes. She just kind of looks at you and is just like, don't meddle in our affairs, little one. I wink at her. Okay, yeah. Right. She's just like, she grins and she's like, ah, you're going to taste delicious. Um, and as she kind of turns, you kind of swipe this thing on her. She's actually going to turn on you now. She actually tries to grab you. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to see if I hit you first. So sure. it does a 23 hit. That might hit. Maybe just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> you need to give me an acrobatics check as she kind of oh. tries to wrap her claws oh. around you. Okay. Um, oh, jeez. Um, that would be 12. 12. That's not enough. She kind of gets this big grip on you, and then she, the fangs come out, and she bites into your neck. No. Um, uh, only a... Uh, you are grappled, so she has an advantage, actually. No, it doesn't help. Only a 13 to hit. Ooh, it doesn't hit you. Yeah. So she so kind of... You struggle, and you manage to, like, lurch yourself that she bites into the leather and the fangs don't pierce through. Okay. And it's just like... Ah, ah, and she pulls herself out. She's like, stay still. Uh, as you're kind of squirming and trying to get break yourself free. The other one is going to attempt to try and get past the earth elemental by sliding under you. I'm just going to do a quick acrobatics check. Sit down. Um, <laughs> Is that what you do? You just like go, poof. Okay. Uh, so they rolled a 10 on their acrobatics. Give me just straight unarmed damage. Like whatever damage you would do with an attack, you just sit on it and crush this vampire. 14. 14. Brilliant. So as it kinds of slide under you, you just sit down and its arm you hear crunch as the arm is like snapped and the vampire's like ah it's like screaming and hissing and trying to pull itself free um eventually managing to get the arm loose but yeah you, 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 you crushed it like, mm. <laughs> like this big elemental just makes a sad face I'm sorry. <laughs> um, sad elemental. Uh, however it does kind of get on the other side and now faced with two cams it looks at which one to try and attack uh so i'll say one two is the fake three four is you uh, so it lunges and just whoop, tries to claw at you, basically. Um, that's going to be 22 to hit. Yeah. Um, let's do that again properly, Mark. Uh, that's eight points of damage as this claw rakes across against your face. And she just hisses. Uh, Karen wants you alive, but I'll make you suffer first. Oh, she seems more from. impressed with dead people. <laughs> uh, so that's the vampire's go. Cam Buckland. I'm going to try and... I'm going to disengage. Okay, cutting action, her, disengage. And run through the cut in the canvas mm -hmm. to try and chase down Franco. Okay, yeah, you step outside and actually, as you step outside, he's like on the other side and looks very surprised to see you. He didn't expect you to chase okay. after him. He's like, uh... <laughs> he just like looks down. You see him there with a hand crossbow pointed like, up. you son of a bitch. I'm just going to try and grapple him if okay. possible. Okay, Am yeah. I allowed to do that? Yeah, yeah, you can make a grapple. Uh, so it's a strength or dex check. Natural 20. Yeah, you grab him. Yeah. Like, you literally just hoik him up and lift him up. And he's like, little legs, he's like, ah, get off me, get off! Can you stand him down? It's like, no, they're not, they're not with me! What? <laughs> that, that's what you get out, that's how much you get out in the round. Uh, Juto. Oh no, sorry, Trixani's gonna go first. And she is seeing this kind of the, the vampire, like, chasing after Cam. She leans around, she's gonna cast a fourth level magic missile at this thing. So, missile. three, four... So three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, sixty-four plus six, one, four, five. This is really good. Eight, ten, nineteen points of damage to that vampire. Three. The magic missiles kind of just pound into this vampire as Trixani kind of comes around the side. Bam, bam, bam! These purple energy bolts slamming into its body, um, and she's just she like looks. She's like. Buckland, what are you doing? Get out of here! And like, just it's like calling out, like seeing you kind of outside holding Franco. Um, and then she's just going to take a defensive stance uh, from this vampire. Uh, now it is Juto, Miss Jing. I would like to attack the vampire that is wounded. Okay, so that is currently on the other side of the big rock elemental at the moment. Do you want to try and like acrobatics over it? Yeah. Excuse me. Give me an acrobatics check. 
Oh, yeah. 19, 20, 21. You actually just run up the boulder, like kicking off. You spin kind of Wuxia style and you bring the Guandao down on this injured vampire. 18 plus 9. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. Mm. So, normal Guandao damage. 5, 6, 7, 8. Plus poison. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Okay, so as you plunge the Guandao down, you actually get it right through the chest. You just hear a, and it just turns to dust. The vampire just evaporates um, completely. You hear the other one that's currently biting you just scream in your ear, just like, kind of thing. I don't want to scream because of poor Josh, uh, <laughs> but you get the idea. Uh, Viathan, you are currently being grabbed by this thing. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, okay, so uh, I think I want to cast um, the second level Crown of Madness. Okay, so you get the stats. First level, second, uh, second level. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. You can feel that, that that swell of magic in you. Again, all that training you've not had, you're beginning to feel it kind of threaten to get out of control, but you're, you're still okay for now. Uh, you cast Crown of Madness on it, right? Yes. So Wisdom Saving Throw for me, I yep. believe. Uh, that is a total of 11. Okay, so my DC is... 14. 14 so. so she like so. this crown of like barbed metal begins to like dig into her temple and she's just like shaking her mind and then she like looks at you and she's like ah and she like lets you go um what and what's the rest of the effect of the spell um yeah so i'm going to choose um so what other um um, foes do we have here? So you can just see behind the large stone elemental on the other side of the stage You see the other vampire turn to dust, but through like a cut in the fabric You can see cam holding up this little halfling um, and those are the only foes you can see. Okay um, I think I'm going to uh, choose the, the little half, uh, uh, halfling as the 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 person that this she has to attack she's, basically. She's attacked, yeah. yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, so she's gonna on her turn, she'll make a beeline and, and make an attack against okay. that. You can see it like she like looks at you and she, her face is contorted in pain, but when she looks at you, it's like she smiles and her eyes brighten up and things like that. And she's just like, ah, and then ah, and like chases after this halfling basically. Okay. And yeah, completely drops you. Uh, do you awesome. like to move? Are you gonna move um, off somewhere? Yeah, I think I'm gonna run over um, to Cam and mm -hmm. um, just kind of back him up in case he needs it. Okay, yeah, so you kind of just get behind him and, yeah. and stuff like that. Perfect. Uh, Elora. Stone. Is there anybody else that's attacking? Oh, you can't see any. Can't see anyone else. Just Franco. Mm -hmm. And he's crazy holding vampire. Mm -hmm. And a gap and go... Do I see the vampire going for him as well, then? You see the vampire just drop Viathan and then turn around and just run towards, well, you you don't really know where it's going. But yeah, it's kind of really kind of running towards the others. Uh, go over to Cam and like raise a fist as if like, do you want me to hit him? Do you want me to hit him? Do you want me to? <laughs> Smash Franco. <laughs> do you point at the vampire? I, I do point at the vampire, uh, but I think it's as she's hitting Franco. Okay. Do, you, do you point at the vampire? I do, I do like. Okay. So I'll, I'll go for the vampire then. Okay. If he's telling me to go for the vampire, okay. I'll go for the vampire. Does attacking it break the crown of manas? I don't think it does. I, I it's don't not think like it a does. charm, I think. No. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think it breaks it. No, if it doesn't say. Yeah. 19. 19, yep, yeah, that hits. Uh, 11 damage. God, uh, that's a beast. And 8, that'll hit. Yep. Um, oh, OP Alora. <laughs> 16 damage. Oh, yeah. yeah that's fine. Big element of four. How many hit points you got? 160 something? 126. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Still like 20 damage in a turn. That's no big deal. <laughs> uh, okay. So, that was the Alora's go. Franco, being held by you, still has his hand crossbow and fires A. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's got... No, that's only on two. It's so close, you just kind of, like, turn and the bolt, like, flies off. And he's like, oh, forget this! And then he pulls out a knife and just starts trying to stab you um, stop, with his other stop. two attacks. Uh, so that's going to be 16 to hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's going to be another nine damage and a con save, please. Okay. Uh, con save <coughs> is a 13. 13, okay. Uh, so you start to feel like your vision blur, the pain kind of becomes numb and you don't really feel the, the, the ache of the wound anymore. And you kind of, you don't have the strength to hold Franco up as you kind of drop him. He's such a little And bitch. your body just collapses uh, unconscious. Okay. Uh, you just poof, out. 
uh, and you can see Franco just like, and he like grabs your collar and he starts dragging. <laughs> He's just like dragging you away, um, and that's what you see happen. Uh, so that's there you go. The vampire, however, runs like you. It's just like ah, does it attack the nearest or whoever you designate? It's whoever you designate, right? Yes. So it just ignores the big stone elemental, so you get an attack opportunity if you'd like. Of course I would like. 21. Well, it does heal 10, actually. Uh, yeah, that hits. 12. Yep. Okay, so it runs past you. Uh, it runs outside, sees Franco, and then just jumps on him, basically, and attempts to grab him, which it does. Uh, um... And then it's gonna bite into his neck with a natural one though. So it's like he like jumps, but the, the it's so short, she kind of just gets like ears and stuff like that. And he's like ah ah get off ah. And he's like running around. Cam just falls to the ground basically yeah. at this point, completely yeah. unconscious. Um, that's there you go. Cam, you're unconscious. Uh, Trixie. Trixie uh, is gonna. She's kind of seeing this happening. She's like, does anybody know what's really going on anymore? Stop the half. <laughs> Stop no. the halfling. All right, fine. And then she is going to conjure something. Woodland animals. No. <laughs> God, no. A summoning spell right now is the I last thing I want. I contemplated doing it. Oh, God, like, please. No, <laughs> Mark would not be very happy. Evolutionary terrain. Swarm of bunny rabbits. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so what she does is she waves her hands and the whole village and the fields that Franco is trying, trying to pull you towards shifts and changes and becomes a thick kind of horrible looking swamp and it actually causes Franco to go like, what? What have you done? What's going on? And like, he doesn't seem to think, he doesn't seem to realize it's an illusion, but it's like clearly like, she, and it's like a huge area, like the whole village disappears to become a, a, an evil looking swamp, basically. Wow. And he just kind of stumbles back, unsure what to do. Uh, Juto. Vampire. You're going to get the vampire? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> just trying to bite onto Franco. Um, it is grappling, so you have advantage. Nice. <laughs> Uh, 19. 19's gonna hit. Seven. Seven points. Plus... One. Nice. <laughs> 57, okay. Uh, yeah, you smack the Gwandao in. It can't really defend itself because it's trying to grip onto to Franco. Um, but it kind of just hisses back at you, second attack. 14 plus nine is 20. Math. Yep. 20 math. Um, 20, 20 math. The math. one. Good old 20 math. Accurate. My favorite number. <laughs> uh, seven. Another seven points. Yep. Oh, uh, cool. Second Gwandao slashes in. Second attack slashes in. Do you want a bonus action on arm strikes? Yes, I would like to do Are that. Are you going to spend please? a key point to do two or just the one? Uh, I will do two. Okay. Key point. So here comes Chun Li kicks. Uh, nine plus eight is. 17. 17. Just. You just managed to, like, kick her in the back of the leg. Nice. Uh, 4 plus 4, 8. 8. Another 8. So one. Yep. So and then the final. So Juto the glass cannon. Uh, 14 plus 9. Yep. Math. Oh. 6 plus 10. 16. Uh, as in, it's 10. Oh. No, you pummel this vampire who's like gripping onto Franco. You just ah, like just punching and like kicking and stabbing. Um, and you can see all these wounds. They are still healing, and it's like on it. It's like ah, it's just <laughs> barely alive, just hissing out one last final breath, basically, um, as you just slam all these wounds into it. Uh, Vithin, should I have saved against Crown of Madness at the end of the turn? Ah, uh, yes. Let's yes. do that now. Uh, failed, so okay. your spell is still active. Okay. What would you like to do? Um, how close is everyone to Franco? So, uh, at the moment, Juto and the vampire are right next to him because he's currently being grabbed uh, by this vampire. Everybody else, Elora, I'm a uh, bit back. you're at the little bit back. She's still at the stage, and Cam is passed out by Cam, uh, by Franco. Okay. Um, what would you like to do? Um, I think I'd like to um, run up from behind Franco and mm -hmm. and just try to. Um, Grapple him down. Okay. Yeah, he's being grappled already, so it's not even. Oh that yeah, hard. I guess that's true. He's um, the, the, you can easily just grab him from the vampire. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Because I don't necessarily like, want him. To, 
die, okay. considering he's worth he's worth five thousand dollars. Money. So uh, you just grab the front of his collar and sort of yank him out of the vampire's grip because she's barely alive at this point, and you just grab him and pin him down on the ground. Just give me a uh, uh, strength or dex check. Cool. Mm. Okay. Uh, we are doing. 14. Okay, I rolled a natural 20. So as you pull him free, he kind of, he like, uh, he loosens up and then he kind of manages to like shove up. He catches your chin and pushes you off and he kind of rolls to the side. Cam's unconscious. He like looks at Cam's body and he's not quite sure what he's going to do. And you're kind of like left half sprawled on the ground, like uh, kind of reaching out <laughs> for him it. as he's getting away. Okay. Um, Elora. Can I? Smash the vampire. Mm -hmm. It's no longer holding uh, Franco, so yeah. You could just be like. <laughs> okay, bug. That'll hit. <laughs> That'll hit. <laughs> Doesn't even consult me anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's Laura, yeah. So she just like hits. It's 30. 17. Um, you, like, like, you, you just crush it <laughs> and it explodes into dust. <laughs> like, cool. dust just poof. <laughs> and then I want to. And you look up and there's just like dust all on your rock hand. <laughs> Dust it off. <laughs> With I your wanna... other rock hands, just like... <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna... I want to pick up Cam's body and just, like, get it away from okay, Franco yeah. and uh, put it on my shoulder and be like, no. You don't have an action left because it's Cam's body, like, there's nothing threatening that. Yeah, you can just kind of, like, drag him back. Like, you scoop up the earth underneath him and just, like... <laughs> Fine. No. And just, you're asleep Human on the pet. thing. Um, <laughs> we little baby. Yeah, basically. Uh, so that was Elora's go. On Franco's go, he's free. He looks at all of you. He's just like, oh, she's gonna kill me this time. He pulls out a potion, turns to gas, and... <laughs> Flies Damn away. It. Son of a gun. That was his escape plan. Damn it. Yeah, but I didn't want him to take Cam. No, I him. know. Like, <laughs> so I, I, like uh... I almost had you. Had you unconscious. <laughs> if only. A few more moments. Uh, so, out of initiative, um, the crowd have massively fleed. Uh, the other actors and things like that have long gone, uh, all carrying. You can see Bob's guards are on the perimeter of the village, just like holding like wooden bats and like pitchforks, just trying to keep an eye out of what's happening. Uh, there is dust covering the broken performance stage um, as you guys look around. Uh, Trixani kind of steps forward, her illusions merge down. Um, she looks up at the unconscious Cam, laughs a little bit, uh, and it's just like, well. I suppose you were right all along that there were quite a few after Buckland. I suppose I mean, you did somewhat save my life. Somewhat. Are you still no, in I'm what not. Form? I'm going to put Cam down. Yeah. And, and then, then I'm going to transform back and then I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration on Cam to remove poison. Okay. Yeah. And that instantly wakes you up. Oh. Yeah. It was a lovely, sweet dream. Did I kill everybody? Yes. No. We all did. We killed yeah. everybody. Yes. We you basically fell asleep. You turned, had a bit of a cry. The halfling shot you a few times, and then you fell asleep. Where is he? Where's Franco? He got away. He got away. Ah. I think you soiled yourself. No, that's just the earth element. There's mud. There's, there's it's mud. mud. It's mud. Love dirt. Uh, where, it smells like mud. Where are the, the undead girls? Made you look. Um, they might be dead. Are they dead? dead. Turned to dust, dead. I'm afraid. Uh, it's a, a property of necromancy, especially vampirism. It's for the best. I'm just gonna like brush some dust off of here. <laughs> I'm caked in mud. Um, I know you might have known them, but they weren't living a good life anymore, Cam. Uh, I need to find out who did that yeah. and hold them responsible. Viathan, you said you were sent here to help me protect from these figures. Do you know anything more about this Karen Blackstar, Black Earth, or anything? Sort of? I I just know that he was that, after Cam. Yeah, he's he, he's after Cam, and uh, and that he's been sending plenty of agents um, to retrieve him. I I'm not a fan of you, Buckland. But the fact of a a rogue necromancer running around, they're the scum of our order. Would Vi Miss Viathan, would you take me to see Miss Leonora? Perhaps there's a way we can help her in some way, tracking down this individual. We can provide information to him and Miss Jing and Miss Galanadel as well. Um, perhaps we can do that in the future. Uh, I'm going to get some sleep. Thank you. I will stop the performances. I will see you in the morning. I really enjoyed the show. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm quite pleased with the script, Tutor. really. Yes. I really like my portrayal. Really? Yes. I was worried that you might be a bit offended. Yeah. I thought I portrayed you as some sort of brutish thug. You were quite intimidating the first time we met. Yeah, 
Thank you. Ah, I see. Uh, and on that note, that's where we're going to win today. Uh, so thank you so much, Alyssa, for yeah, playing with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, super good. Uh, Viathan is super cool badass. I like her a lot. Mm. Uh, and yeah, maybe if we come back Sassy. out to Seattle, we can uh, oh, get yeah. you in on the game. Yeah, yeah that would be UK. fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to read some donations, I think. We're going to try. To, I need to get to my laptop. So. Okay, so try to right, Josh, if I quickly unplug my mic to move over. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to do that. We're going to read your donations. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, big thank you to uh, the folks all at Penny Arcade for letting us use the studio here. Uh, I hope you like the new overlay. This is going to be our new overlay that we're going to be using as well. Um, we're going to make some a couple of little adjustments and things like that. Um, but yeah, should be really, really good. Uh, right. Shall, who wants to start? Go for it, Chris. <laughs> okay. Rom Rapra has donated saying, thank you, Penny Arcade. Mark, steal me an AI pin. No, I want them all for myself, I'm afraid, <laughs> Ron. Uh, Blaine Kerrigan donated. Very Thanks generous. Very much. Thank you very much. Uh, movies Man 8. I have a poem for whoever rolled the lowest. When times get tough and things get gritty, remember to fight every day for that ass and titty. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm sorry, listen. This is not you know, a, a, a window no, into I'm it. all about okay. that. Okay, okay, nice. <laughs> Lo Rams has donated, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Nightjar has donated, saying thank you so much for an amazing time at MCM. It was oh, wonderful meeting you all. It was lovely to meet you uh, too, Nightjar. Awesome to meet you, Nightjar. The Uncharted Territory session was brilliant as well, as well as the rest of the stream of Annihilation. Hope you've all enjoyed your Seattle stay. Love you guys. We've had a great time. Yeah. We've had an oh, amazing, amazing time, honestly. Meeting you so don't want to nice go peeps. home. <laughs> Yin Yanga, man, this session just makes me think of MCM. It was great meeting you all. Forgot to get a pic with you, Mark. Anyway, hope you guys are enjoying Seattle and have a safe trip back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thanks man. Thanks for coming again as well. All, uh, All the way from America. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey, do you want to read these, Kim? Kid Kaboom One has donated. Cam's dick is spectacularly large, but yes. occasionally it turns into a very long noodle. Chick Oh, I'm not reading that one out. <laughs> uh, thank you for MCM last oh, wow. week. That VOD was great. Uh, I want to see shark spray in normal sessions. <laughs> that was a great little shark item, like a random spray. thing. Yeah. Uh, um, Rapara has donated again. Uh, this story is everything I wanted. It's an excellent cap to the two-day celebration of all things mm. D&D, the stream of Annihilation, that, that the stream of Annihilation was. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, man. Um, and Ace of Thorns. So great to see you all at MCM last week. Uh, and many, many thanks for the courage to ask to to thank Michelle Nichols for being uh, such a hero and influence. Uh, for me, well done on the stream of Annihilation too. Thank you very much. I'm so glad so many people watch the stream of Annihilation. Yeah. Like, holy moly. You want to take it away, Mark? Yep. Uh, so Kickaboom donated again. Another donation. This is for Kate Morrison because we're all soldiers now. Rest well, you can. And thank you for soldiering on through your poorliness. Uh, hug. Uh, also, love to try for being the best lovable idiot in the world. Uh. Uh, and then Bass Tape donated the final donation with, I think we all agree that this session was smashing. <laughs> Sans approves. Thanks for smashing. Smashing. I think Thanks that's everybody. all of them. Thanks everybody for your donations. Once again, a huge thank you to Alyssa for playing with us. Uh, make sure you check out the C team. Um, oh, there's one oh, more. There you go. Oh, do you, who wants to read this one? Katie? Alyssa, do you want to do you want to read it since you don't you, get to read it? You don't get to read a nation, oh, so please read it. And this one is, is a nice uh, thank you as well. Okay, so it's uh, it's from Meta Manu. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to Penny Arcade and Josh for making this possible. Alyssa was a great guest with a, with a character on point. Another great <laughs> episode, <laughs> episode uh, as was the stream of Annihilation, lots of laughs, and Katie, get well soon. Thank you thank very you. much. Aww. Thank you very much, Meta Manu. So yeah, thank you big thank much. you to Alyssa, and thank yeah. you to Josh for running all the tech. He's done an amazing job backstage coming yep, yep, on yep. Sunday. And thank you to Jerry, who also kind of approved all of this. Like, yeah. said, like yep, thumbs up, they can do it. So big thank you there. Awesome. Uh, thank you to all the Wizards of the Coast staff for the stream of Annihilation. We hope you guys enjoyed that. It is going to be available on their Twitch and their YouTube as I a VOD it's as well. Already gone up. It's already right. gone up. There you go. Cool. Thank you very much. They've, they've tweeted there. about it. We'll we'll do a link as well on our Twitter, yeah. our TND, and like pushing where to find it and everything else, yep, and yep. Uh, and the Penny Arcade tweets and stuff like that as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you once again, and we'll see you next time. Take Bye. care. Check out the C Bye -bye. team. We'll Check out C team. Yeah. It's really funny. Check them out. <laughs> Bye. Bye.